co-captains for the Wildcats. The Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune came home for homecoming. Last week, a hand-sculpted marble statue of the university's founder was unveiled in Daytona Beach. It is now on display at the News Journal Center until December 12th for all to see before she makes her final trip to our nation's capital to represent the state of Florida. Now, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune and those following her story will look on as the Bethune-Cookman Wildcats once again continue to strive for their first win of the season against Prairie View A&M. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Municipal Stadium here in Daytona Beach, Florida. It's SWAC College Football live streaming on YouTube, Cat Eye Network, and the Wildcast. Today, it's the Prairie View A&M Panthers visiting the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman University. Nick Gimbel alongside Terrence Gatling here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. Terrence, welcome back in the booth. Oh, man, Nick, it feels good to be back outside and back in the booth here enjoying this Florida lifestyle. Great to see the Wildcats on the field. Coin toss on the way, but let's take a look at star running back Lindamian Brooks for this Panther squad. Right now, Lindamian Brooks is doing a good job carrying the rock for the, for, for the Panthers. He has 244 yards on the season. They call him the Mamba. I wonder why. <laughs> for the quarterback situation, if you even want to call it a situation, Terrence, Devin Black got the start last week, put up good numbers, but if this is Shannon Patrick's team, and we're showing that here today. He gets the start. Yeah, it's Shannon Patrick's team. He got hurt, and um, Devin Black had to come in. He did a great job replacing him while he was on injury, but like you said, it's Patrick's team. So we're back to Patrick. And there you see a good shot of LaDamian Brooks out there for that coin toss. And there is Devin Black being shown right there. Bethune-Cookman in burgundy with black bottoms. Burgundy tops will be out for this kickoff. Meanwhile, Prairie View in white with purple pants. Head coach for the Panthers in his third season, Eric Dooley brought his team all the way back from the bottom. Yeah, they were at the bottom, and they're doing a good job of getting back, and Coach Sims is trying to do the same thing on the Wildcats sideline. Terry Sims, 0-6 this season after a couple, three straight seven-win seasons. Yeah, Coach Sims, like I said, he's no stranger to this. In 2016, he started off 0-6 and brought that team back, and they started winning some ball games. So he's in a familiar place, and he's going to get it done. So as we mentioned, Pat... Shannon Patrick getting the start, 79 out of 141 attempts, 911 yards on the season. Devin Black got the start last week, 18 of 30 for 307 yards. And there we see Tony Ross wearing the white cap for this afternoon, a beautiful Saturday afternoon. A couple of clouds have started to grace us with some shade and the Wildcats are going to kick this one away. It's going to be Prairie View ball, and there we see 84 degrees, 57% humidity, only a 10% chance of rain. That's dropped drastically. Right. It was 30% earlier. I'm glad to see it's only 10%. That means it's going to be a nice, hot ball game here in Daytona Beach, and hopefully it'll wear down on that Texas team. So it will be Panther ball after this Wildcat kickoff. Prairie View will be attacking the west end zone. And the Wildcats are coming out. Ready to play, hopefully to get their first win on the season, Nick. We know it's been a long season. Um, and it gets longer when you're losing. But hopefully we can get the job done as they kick off right now. Xavier McDonald with the kick. He'll send this one all the way to the goal line. But Prairie View is going to bring it down that right sideline. They'll get to about the 20 yard line. And that is where Prairie View A&M will take over and we'll see Jawan Pass, the six foot four, 228 pound grad student starting at quarterback. Yeah, he, uh, he's having a good season so far. He's, he's at um, 1,200 yards 
uh, actually almost 1,300 yards. He's at 1,281 yards. And complete, completion percentage at about 61.9%. So he's doing a good job. And he's a graduate senior as well as Mr. Brooks, the Mamba. He came over from, from Grambling State. So Prairie View is breathing life into their program with people that have, that have been there before and done it. So it's first and 10 Panther ball at the 22-yard line. Pass will hang on to it. He'll come up to the line of scrimmage, and he'll be taken down after about a two-yard gain. He thought about throwing that ball, but then he realized he was past the line of scrimmage. Mm-hmm. He wanted. He was there, out there on the RPO, and he had he had a, a receiver open. But like you said, he was he realized he was past the line of scrimmage and couldn't make make the uh, make the pass. And guess who was on the stop? Ontario Johnson got that tackle. Is this pass is caught by Lindamian Brooks? The Running back, we were talking about getting his first touch of the game. Yeah, Ontario Johnson, the SWAC leader in tackles with 31 solo, 22 assists, 53 total. And as I was telling you at the pre-broadcast, for last game he had a game high of 14 tackles. And that was, that was amazing. And I, I want to see what he's going to do here. Third and about five. Pass will send this one deflected, and it'll be fourth down, a big stop for the Wildcat defense. It'll be three and out. And that's good for this Wildcat, Wildcat football team right now because, as we know, they are slow starters. They, they, they start very slow coming out of the gates. Um, some people like to call them the cardiac cats because they wake up in the fourth quarter. So right now to get a jump on them to get that three and out is a good thing. So hopefully they can capitalize on offense. Shamar Minnis is back at his own 25-yard line to receive this punt on the way from Caleb Darbone. So Darbone with the right foot. A spiraling punt will drop oh. at the 35-yard line. It goes all the way back and dangerous there at the 20-yard line. I'm not sure if that hit one of the Wildcats getting set for a block, but it, it had to be handled nicely. I'm not sure if it hit anybody either, but he should have left it after it went over his head. After he ran up to try and field the punt and then it went over his head, he should have left it alone because he put us in a situation where had he not gotten on top of the football, Prairie View ball in, in, in the red zone <laughs> at the 20-yard line. And here is Shannon Patrick. He did not take a snap last week after being taken out of the game two weeks ago against South Carolina State. So first and 10 for the Wildcats, their first offensive possession of the game. Still no score. Patrick will hold on to it, goes over the middle for Kamari Everett, but he missed. And, and Everett is a huge tight end. That's a, that's a huge target to miss. But like you said, Patrick was on the sideline last weekend. He was, he was dressed. So maybe he was well enough to play, but they didn't want to risk it. And, and Black had to take over the quarterback duties uh, for last week as well as the week before. But now Patrick's back. He's doing the same. It would be horrible. And it would, it would, it would send a, a, a bad message amongst the team if you lose your position to injury. So second and 10 after the incompletion. Patrick from the shotgun again holds on to it. There is Kamari Everett and stumbles for the first down. At that time he was able to get 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 the ball, get his paws on the ball and, and run bull down to about the 30, 31 yard line. And here's tempo from the Wildcat offense. Patrick, third straight pass play. This one broken up, incomplete, second and ten. And there are flags on the play right now from from the head um, line judge, and he's signaling the preliminary signal offside. So the Wildcats are going to get five there. I don't know about the tempo offense right now at this point. I think they need to slow it down a little bit because our, our time of possession was like just over 13 minutes last week against Mississippi Valley State. So I'm not sure at, at this point if I'm Coach Sims, if I would, if I would go tempo. I would try and slow the ball down a little yeah. bit more to try and take the air out of the ball. And this is, as we just mentioned, Shannon Patrick's first couple of touches on game action in a game and a half. And there's the first handoff to Quayshawn Bird. He picks up about four yards. It'll be second and one. Good job there by the old man Great on this team. Game. Now I can remember when he was a baby Wildcat. He's a full-blown full, full blown, uh, Tiger Panther. Just a wildcat. Just a wildcat. A feral cat. What, what is a wildcat? Do you know? The question remains to be answered. <laughs> we were talking about it pregame. 
All Panthers are Wildcats, not all Wildcats are Panthers. And this bobbled snap, and Shannon Patrick has to jump back, and he'll be taken down at the 23-yard line. Not sure what was going on there, but instead of second and one, now it's going to be third and a mile. Oh, I'm pretty sure what was going on. The center snapped the ball into the ground, and Patrick had to, had to try and field the ball. But this is the type of things that we're talking about that, that, that have reflected the Wildcat season. Um, you're doing a good job driving the ball downfield. You got second and short. Now you're about third and 16 in the blink of an eye. So let's see where we go from here. Third down, 26. Wildcats were two for 10 on third downs last week against Mississippi Valley State. This is their first third down of the game. And early movement, I believe, by the Wildcats. Yeah, preliminary signal, false start there. So that's going to be another bullet to the foot, to the other Marking foot. Down. So now we're going to back up oh, five more yards on top of oh, that. And you said five third down really conversion. Two, two for ten last week against Mississippi Valley State. And you're just not going to win football games that third way. You've got to take advantage of, of every opportunity you get. Yeah, third downs are huge, as, as, well as, fourth, as well as fourth downs, if you decide to go for it. Um, but third down, you definitely got to have. So third down from their own 19, the 41 yard line is the first down marker. Patrick from the shotgun, he'll look deep, stumbles out of the pocket, moves to the right sideline, gets outside the hash marks, and he'll be taken down in the backfield for a loss. His first sack of the game. Yeah, offensive line wasn't holding up, and you can see his right tackle having problems immediately out the gate with that defense end coming around the edge, which made Patrick have to stand up, and then the receivers were just trying to get open. And he couldn't get the ball to him. So that's going to bring up fourth down. So right now we're 0-1 so far on third down conversions. And again, as, as you said, Terrence, just shooting yourself in the foot there. You were second and one. No, both feet. Both feet. <laughs> second and one, and it turns into fourth and about 21. And this punt nearly got blocked, but it is end over end, and the fair catch is called for at the 29-yard line. That was a good punt to get that one away. It was a great punt. And, and for those of you that are watching the broadcast that don't understand football completely, the punter is actually a part of the defense when you're playing the game of field position. And basically right now, with about 10 yards, with the exception of 10 yards, they're, they're back to where they started at the first drive. So you got, you got a 10-yard a 10 head start. Had, had the return man kept the ball in the end zone, they would have started off on the 25-yard line. So let's see what Coach Yogi has dialed up right now for this Wildcat defense. So officially a first and 10 from the 30 yard line, still no score between the Wildcats and Panthers. 10 minutes and 48 seconds left in quarter number one. Possession number two for Prairie View A&M. Jawan Pass with two options to the right, one option to the left, and the handoff will be completed, but stumbling for extra yards after contact. Good job by that Wildcat defensive line making a stop right there. They fooled me because I thought it was another RPO. That was LaDamian Brooks again fighting for that two-yard gain. And like, like I said, Brooks is having a good season in his graduate season. I wouldn't say it's a monster season. He only has 244 yards, but he he's, he's ha has, a, has a decent campaign going. Jawan Pass, he'll step back, throws it over the middle for the check down route. And it's only going to be another two-yard gain. Third down and six coming up. Mm. Third down, six. Big time tackle made by... What's that? Was that Ontario again? I believe so. It wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised either. Now, e even when I saw him warming up on the field, he was the first one out warming up. And I said, this kid is a monster. I didn't even recognize it was him without the pads, but it has a nice work, work ethic. And more laundry on the turf. So back him up five more yards, because that's going to be a false start on the Panthers. So that's right now, the Panthers are, are, are oh, coming please. out five yard penalty, um, third down. a little sluggish. And again, this is a four and one Prairie View team, top of the West on a three game third winning streak. Man. I, I kind of bounce it off the wall to you, Terrence. How much of a benefit is 0-6, all things considered, for this Wildcat defense to catch some teams napping at the start of the game? 
No expectations. That's the benefit because everybody already expects you to lose. So, so, so as, as that pass falls, is it complete? Completed, but the complete. receiver down on the turf, so that negates the play immediately. Right. So, so there's no expectations for this Wildcat team because most people have counted but throwing Cookman out already. So you're coming into this ball game. The only people that believe in you are, are the people in the press box, you and I, of course. Um, the fans that have decided to come and everybody in the locker room. And if it wasn't for the band, you know, the stadium is kind of empty today. So they have no expectations holding them down. So they should be able to perform without that weight. Well, the Wildcat defense with two straight stand-ups, three and outs on back-to-back -back possessions for Prairie View A&M. And the Wildcats will take over. There's a late hit out of bounds, and there's the flag. Yeah, great return by the. I, I was a little bit nervous with him returning this one again, but he got he got some decent yardage on it, and, and the Wildcats are going to be able to uh, move forward 15 more yards with the late hit out of bounds. But like I said, there, there's no expectation um, um, from, from from the Wildcats right now because they have had the slow start. Like I said, in 2016, Coach Sims started off with. Four, I want to count one, two, three, four, five losses. Alcorn State, they canceled that game because of weather. They lost to North Texas. They lost to Savannah State, Tennessee State, North Carolina Central, the then North Carolina A&T. And on, on October 22nd, 2016, Coach Sims got his first win over Dell State. Big time win over Dell State. And that propelled the Wildcats to winning the rest of that season. And they actually had a South Carolina State game that was canceled that year also, but they played it on the back end after the Classic, and they, they won that game also. So it just takes one. College football is a cyclical sport. Everybody's going to have their ups and downs, but it's not getting too high and not getting too low. Shannon Patrick, first and 10 from the shotgun. Pump fake, gets it over the middle. Is that intercepted? Yes, it is. Oof. One pass on the next offensive drive, and it turns into an interception. Well, I just said it just takes one, and hopefully that one pass and Patrick interception pass. is not what it's going to take for the, the Prairie View Panthers with sideline just came to life. This is a, th th let me say this. This is a very different Prairie View team from what I remember. Uh, back in the day, Prairie View had an 80 game losing streak. They didn't, they went 80 games. Can you imagine? That's almost 10 years of football, not winning. I can't imagine that. Uh, it's almost like, like the water boy with the mud dogs. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, they've gained momentum and they're at the top of the conference on the west side. So it's them and Jackson State. First and 10. So after the interceptions, first and 10 for Prairie View, Jawan Pass will send this one all the way down, and it's caught, and this will be a touchdown for Prairie View State. One pass from Shannon Patrick is an interception. One pass from Jawan Pass is a touchdown pass. All it takes is one, and they did what you usually do. Coach Dooley dialed up a play-action play, play-action pass. On offense, a lot of coaches like to go to the play-action pass right after a turnover to try and catch the defensive back sleeping. And unfortunately, we were caught sleeping. As Trajan Spiller, the freshman, with a nice snag at about the 20-yard line and completed the run into the end zone. 6-0 Panthers with the extra point on the way. Reyes with the kick. With the He'll send it right through the uprights. He was two for three on field goals and three for three on PATs last last game. This is a Prairie View team coming off of a bye week, too. Panther seven. Really? Catch nothing. Are you joking? Is that what your pad says? They're coming off of a bye week? Mm-hmm. Really? Interesting. Because that seems to be a running trend with the teams that we play. This Everybody is Bethune-Cookman's third game against the team with a bye week before them, I believe. That That's unfair. Um, when, when you think about it, because what, what does a bye week mean? A bye week means you get rest. You get a chance to prepare for your next team. You get the chance to get some of those guys back that may have been injured. So overall, it's a good thing for everybody in the organization. The coaches get home to see their wives. The wives are happy. Everybody comes back happy. Bethune Cookman hasn't had that opportunity yet, and we keep running into teams that have had bye weeks before they play us. 
So, mm, mm, slight, a slight advantage there. But not an excuse. Not an excuse. <laughs> slight advantage. What what I hope right now is that the Wildcats don't don't hang their head on that on that freakish turnover because it it was a 50-50 ball essentially. It went into the Wildcat receiver hands and then Prairie View just came down with it. Right. And it made an amazing catch. I, I guarantee you that's going to be on a highlight not because it was it was an interception, but because of the type of interception because I didn't even think he caught the ball. So with 8:15 left in quarter number 1, it's a 7 nothing lead for Prairie View A&M. And Reyes will send this away with the right foot. End over end kick goes all the way into the end zone and the Wildcats will bring it out. Again, Shamar Minnis stood up at the 14 yard line and that is where the Wildcats will take possession over with 8.09 left in quarter one. There's a flag down on the play. Um, Minnis did bring it out of the end zone. He's on the return. Um, There's a flag on the play. At this point, I'm wondering, uh, why bring it out the end zone? Because if he doesn't bring it out the end zone, we're at the 25-yard line. Mm -hmm. And all I saw were white jerseys return, <laughs> coming towards him. The back him. Against the return team, number and the block in the back. The will be half the distance to the goal. First so seven. the block in the back. So we're going to get pushed back. Another 10. Minnis was taken down at the 14. They're going to bring him back to the seven yard line. Okay. So that's half the distance. The catch first and 10. And here is Shannon Patrick, line. the handoff to Quayshawn Bird. He fights off a couple of tackles, gains about seven yards on the play. Bird on the carry. Yeah, great game by Quayshawn on that play. He was stuck at the end. Quayshawn Bird with four carries, 31 yards, 7.8 yard average per run last game. Second and four. Quayshawn was putting in some work last game. Then I remember he had the, he had the one play that they, that that touchdown towards the end of the game. Looking like another run here for Quayshawn Bird. He'll take the handoff, gets the first down. Out to the 20-yard line. Bird carry. Another good run. See, now, now, now is when I personally would go play action. But I'm not coaching. First down the but if this were PlayStation, and this were Madden, I would be going play action pass right now. And now you've got Patrick with a little bit more room instead of backing up into the end zone, too, if he right. wants to escape out of the pocket. Right. And it, it looks like Quayshawn is in the backfield still. Let's see. To the left of Patrick, there is Bird with the handoff. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's another seven-yard run from Quayshawn Bird. His helmet popped off, off, so he's going to have to come out. Here comes Jimmy Robinson for at least one play. Right, he's going to have to come out because his helmet popped up. Like you said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But, um, yeah. Second down is short. It might be another run coming up. Let's see what Coach Sims is going to do. Two options at wide out. Shannon Patrick in the, in the shotgun. The handoff to Jimmy Robinson. He'll cut right up the middle for another first down run. Jimmy Robinson, yeah. the ball carrier. So two straight first down runs on second down. That means... The Wildcats are still 0 for 1 technically on third down opportunities, but they're moving the chains. And, and that's all that matters. The chains are being moved, and the, the offensive line is starting to get into the rhythm of the game and feeling good. Um, they're getting out, out out there. Those guards are getting out there to the to the linebacker because right now they're running a 4-3 uh, wide. So as we have a shift <laughs> by the tight end, the Wildcats should be running Bobbled snap. That ball is loose at the line of scrimmage. And I believe Robinson was able to pounce on top of it. No loss, no gain. Second and ten. And these are the things Robinson with the recovery. for me, uh, if I'm Patrick, okay, that I would try and minimize. Because right now, everybody, like you said um, at the beginning of the broadcast, Second Black is on the sideline ready to go. 
And Patrick, he's been out for a few weeks, so these are some of the things that he's going to have to uh, minimize. It's just little a football mechanic. He has to look the ball all the way in before he decides to make another move. Here is Patrick. He'll hold on to it. He's pressured in the pocket. Near side Robinson tackled in the backfield for a loss. Third down and long coming up. Yeah, he had to get rid of that quick and go to his check down, man, because Patrick the offensive, um, offensive guard on that play uh, got, got, got beat horribly um, to the inside, and it was a straight path, uh, straight path to Patrick. Third down, 17, ball and I'm looking at it. I'm not sure who that was that got, that got beat like that that got beat like that, but it was a straight pass to Patrick, so he had to get rid of it really quick. Two options to either side of Shannon Patrick. Third down. Third down and long, their second third down of the game. Patrick hangs on to it. That pass is blocked down at the line of scrimmage. So that's going to bring up fourth. Jesse Evans getting up and blocking that one. Bethune-Cookman 0 for 2 on third downs. A couple of first down runs on second down, but now they're going to have to punt it away again, and here comes Ben Lennon. And, and like we said before, this, this is a second-half team. On um, that third down play, I'm not sure. Uh, we ran all slants on that play, so I'm not sure if we were, we were going to get the first down anyway. But <laughs> it was blocked. So Lennon again almost blocked, and this one is going to spiral through the air, handled at the 40 Four-yard line, I believe, so good field position for Prairie View A&M. Great field position for Prairie View. Last time they were uh, brought down to the 30-yard line, so that's almost like a 15-yard game. <laughs> like I was saying, so right now, the Wildcats are essentially back in the hole. And it's either completely hit or miss at the line of scrimmage right now for Bethune-Cookman. Either Quayshawn Burke can break through the line of scrimmage and get a seven or eight yard run, or the line of scrimmage collapses and Patrick has to be taken down for a loss. But now Bethune-Cookman on the defensive side of the ball, first and 10 Prairie View at the 49 yard line. Pass with the handoff and a one yard run. And there is Ontario Johnson with the tackle in the backfield. That was a good play call by the Panthers. You see the jet sweep action. Um, it was a fake, the fake jet sweep action, and they go up the middle. But the Wildcats sniffed it out early and, and quick, and only a gain of one on the play, which is which is good. But let's see if the Wildcats can do the same thing on second down, because it looks like they went to a five receiver set. Nobody in the backfield with Jawan Pass here on second down and nine near midfield. At the 45 yard line, and there is motion. And another false start for, for the Panthers. And these are the type of things that 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 you have to capitalize on as a as a team that's that's, that's fighting. When when teams that that on paper are better than you, when they start making little mistakes like they're making, you have to capitalize on it. Um in order to stay in the football game. And other than the one ridiculously long pass from Jawan Pass. The Wildcat defense has stood their ground to this point, but again, no one in the backfield with Jawan Pass. He'll send it to the right sideline, and that one is incomplete. Yeah, he threw that one a little low, and that's going to bring up third down and, and, and long. Third down and about 14 for them. So let's see if the Wildcats can get off the field right now. And like you said, other than that one pass, there hasn't been much offense for the Panthers. And Jawan Pass did not have a throwing touchdown two weeks ago. All three touchdowns for the Panthers were on the ground. So that's his first touchdown pass in a while. Ontario Johnson directing traffic in the linebacker position. Pass in the pocket, sends it to the near side. There's a heavy collision. And taken down for a three-yard gain. Fourth down coming up. Good morning. <laughs> like he said, he was there. He wasn't expecting him to come downhill like that, but he came full speed ahead. I almost thought it was going to be a flag on the play for a helmet-to-helmet. -helmet. And there's some kind of meeting. 
against the Austin Going on on the sideline, but receiver number zero was covered. I didn't up see the call. False pass. start. Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Penalty declined. Okay, because I was about to say, usually, usually when there's a false start, there's no play. The play's dead. Okay. And they let Takevi and Thomas just bulldoze the receiver. Right. He, he, he definitely Very put him beautiful. underneath the it's yard marker the there. So hopefully that'll bring some type of life for this Wildcat offense. They're going to get the ball. They're... Let's see on the punt. But theoretically, they should get the ball in good field position. And two minutes and 55 seconds left to go can possibly get some type of points before the end of the first quarter. And again, for a Wildcat team that doesn't typically start super strong offensively, it would be pretty big for them to pull even before the end of the first 15 minutes. Right, and I guarantee you the coaching staff, the coaching staff, they know their team. Uh, the Wildcats on the sideline know this team. So everybody right now to keep them at seven with the first quarter saying we're still okay. We're still okay. No matter what happens, as long as we keep them at seven points right now, we're still okay. Mm -hmm. Shamar Minnis at his own 15-yard line, waiting for the punt from Caleb Darbone. Darbone, he'll send it away. This one spiraling, bouncing at the 23-yard line, handled by Shamar Minnis right in Good traffic. Block. He's got running room down the right sideline and taken out at the 41-yard line. Okay, getting a little excited. <laughs> I had to stand up out of my chair. Did you see those crack blocks? Unbelievable. Get wow. off the tracks when the train is coming. Okay. So Again, like I said, more life. More life. You got to build on top of that. So maybe this is the day. What do you say, Nick? And we'll take another look. Again, th these punts are almost being blocked between both teams. And you know, Shamar Minnis just flirting with danger there. For the third time today. For the third time. <laughs> <laughs> they, hey, I was just about to say. Devin Black is now at quarterback in this game, and the run is snuffed out by the Prairie View defense for a two-yard loss. So the coaching staff decided to go to Black early, and I, I'm not sure if that's because of production or, or, or what, but he, uh, Patrick only had uh, two, was it two possessions or three possessions? Mm -hmm. And now they're, now they're going, going to Black, and so they wanted to make that change early. Like I said, you can't lose your position to injury. That would suck. Everybody on the sideline will be scared to get hurt. So let's see what Black is going to do with his offense. Two options to either side for Black. Jimmy Robinson in the shotgun along with him in the backfield. And this one-yard run will bring Bethune-Cookman out to the 39-yard line. Third down and 11. Let's see what Devin Black can do with his first third down. With his first third down of the game, easy for me to say. Right. For, for me, I would pa have passed that play because you, you have a cold quarterback, essentially, that's coming to the ball game. You already gave him one, one run. Now we're at third and long, and now, now everybody in the stands know we're going to pass. So, again, two options to the right, two options to the left. Black drops back in the pocket. He'll send it through the air. Kamari Averett, the intended target. He had running room, but it's overthrown by Black. Fourth down and 11 coming up. And a flag came from the stands. And it's, gonna, it's resting at about, uh, he picked it up. Okay. All right. Pass interference. Wow. Preliminary signal pass interference. Pass interference. Defense, number 22. So the Wildcats are going to get some, some, some automatic luck automatic here. First down. Got to be lucky to be good and good to be lucky. When you, when you double team Kamari Averett like that, it's going to draw penalties. You have to. Do you see this kid? Look at him. I'm scared of him from up here. Look, he's towering over everybody. Six foot six, 260. Listen, six foot six, 260. You don't want to see that running towards you at five foot nine to six foot cornerback. And now they're putting him up top by itself. They're singling him out. Man on man coverage to the left of Devin Black, but the handoff for a one yard gain, second and nine. I want them to, I want them to look at that right now. That that one on one up top, whatever. That was a that was a, a, a decent mm, mm, one yard gain. It was okay, but Tar he got tripped up early. Tariq Mulmore, five foot eleven, two twenty, sophomore, 
He's the one tasked with man-on-man -man coverage against six foot six, six foot Kamari six. Everett. Are you kidding me? Let's go there right now. Let's go. One man in motion. Back to the right side of Devin Black. And another handoff. Ooh. There's a first down run. Ooh. Ooh, bulldozer. Extra yards after contact. That's a great job on that on that play by uh, Ladarian Wilson. He's a big boy. So right now, Bethune-Cookman has his beef package in. Now Black, he'll send a screen pass to the right sideline and shrugged out of, out of bounds. That was a good, good block on the outside by Jimmy Robinson to um, go ahead and get some extra yardage. Uh, he looked over because he thought he was going get, to get called on, on, on clipping on that play, but he, he did not. So he's good. And we still have this. Okay. The previous play. The previous play is on the further review. What, what, what are we reviewing right now? I believe we have a timeout called on the field. And they, I, I thought maybe because I had the heads on, on but I could have swore he said the previous play is under review. And yeah, the official is putting on the headset. So Tony Ross in a discussion with the replay booth. I, I'm just trying to figure out what are we reviewing at this point on that play. Potent, I mean, the only thing I can think of is a potential for targeting. With Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy looked back. Like I said, he looked back like, hey, did y'all see me? Or, no, nah, we good? Let's go. But I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think that was reviewable. Maybe I'm wrong. You know, it's my first day back. <laughs> I got to <laughs> dust off the, the rule book and see what's going on. But I really want, I really, really, really hope that they expose um, right now whatever it up top by itself against a 5'11". Five 5'11", 11. Five foot 11, Tariq Mulmore, the sophomore against the senior. Okay, right now, the ball is sitting at the 30-yard line. 30-yard fade on second, uh, on second down to just say... Just, just put it up in the air see. and let Kamari fight for it. Let's see. And we may have a review for helmet to helmet. So as you said, oh. Terrence, you got it right. Okay. Let's see. But again, that review is still happening, so it'll be interesting to see what comes from this. There's only 0.3 seconds left in the quarter, by the way. So we'll have one more play after all of this. So, so in your expert opinion, put your offensive coordinator hat on right now. Second down. One, two, three, four, five yards to go. Long five. What do you call it? On second down, I'd like to see Devin Black air this out. And here we're actually going to get a look at the replay here as Devin Black sent it to the right sideline. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. there is definitely oh, yeah. potential for targeting oh, yeah. as number 19, Bryce Turner, for Prairie View, sent a helmet-to-helmet -helmet collision. Bryce can pack this up and go back to Texas. He's done for the day. He is done. And here is the call from the officials. Tony Ross, the floor is yours. After further review, there's no foul for targeting. There's no foul. Did you hear what he said? I could not. It sounded like he said there's no penalty for targeting. So no targeting penalty, and that will actually run the clock. That's the end of the first quarter. So a little bit of confusion down on the field. And in the booth, because I am confused. And in the booth. <laughs> I am confused. Because what, what my eyes saw on the screen didn't match the call. But that does bring us to the end of quarter number one. It's a 7 nothing lead for Prairie View A&M. And like I said, right now the Wildcats, everybody on the Wildcats sideline has to feel like we're good. And you, me you mentioned, Terrence, you never want to lose your job because of an injury, but Devin Black is showing that he's, he's fighting for this job at quarterback. And this is one of the longest drives of the game for this Wildcat team. 
Let's be honest, he's been fighting since summer practice. And he lost the job during summer practice. Mm -hmm. Sat on the sideline a few ball games and got his opportunity. And now he's showing, he, he's making the best of his opportunity, of his second chance. Because uh, we all know second chances don't come around too often. So he has another chance. And I, I'm pretty sure he got tired of sitting on that sideline. So we'll swap ends. The Wildcats will be attacking the west end zone now, second down and four to start quarter number two. Wildcats down by seven. Black with the handoff and another four yard run. First down for the Wildcat. Do you see Everett? Everett again, man on man coverage. Man on man coverage. Okay, we run the ball. Got the first down, right? It's time. Let's take that shot. Everett, Everett just dragged Logan Jackson in the end zone. And the Wildcats are looking on the sideline for the play right now. Coach, fade. Coach, fade. 13 seconds on the play clock. Again, man-on-man -man coverage to the left of Devin Black. You've got to send it Kamari Everett's way at some point. Here we point. go. Here we go. Look. It's a 50-50 ball up in the air. Kamari <laughs> Everett comes Touch down with it. Touchdown. Touchdown, Wildcats. Nick, that's what I told you. I need to be the offensive coordinator, Nick. It took that's a couple me. of plays for Devin Black to finally get it out there. But get it up in the air, six foot six, Kamari Everett's gonna come down with it. And we're okay. We're okay. We just, we're point out the attempt from tying the ball game. Right now, here's the issue Magadam was 0 for 1 on field goals and 0 for 1 on PATs. And look at this trick play a potential for a two point conversion, and they got it. There's no issue. Because we're not gonna kick it. There's no issue. The Wildcats are on top. No issue. Great job. What did you say about McGottam last week? Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There we go. I'm glad. We're on the same page. It don't matter. So the Wildcats up eight to seven. There we go. Hey. And the stands are going crazy. Well, at least the press box. At least the press box. At least the press box. And here we go. We see Devin Black faking the handoff. Just throw it up into an open area. Kamari Everett gets space for himself. That's a beautiful pass from beautiful Devin Black. Pass. Beautiful pass. But it helps. That's a receiver. It's six foot seven on a five foot eleven cornerback. It's the trust factor. You gotta trust. You have to. You have to. You gotta trust that he's not only gonna out jump him because he 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 out him. <laughs> but look, he can't do anything with that. What? Nick. John Williams wasn't even looking back for the ball. He was just trying to put himself in a good position. But there's no position you can put yourself in against Kamari Everett like that. None. Have you ever been to the gym and, and you know you're in there doing your thing, doing your Adam Sandler thing, and then Shaq shows up to the gym? What are you going to do? Nothing. <laughs> well, Kamari Everett is the SWAC leader in receiving yards coming into this game with 542 yards. And he's just adding on to it. And we definitely need to stack on to that. Like you said, he, he definitely needs to stack on to that. That's a big part of the Wildcat offense. And they can't pull another man. Only thing they can do is pull a safety over to the help. And this one is going to be taken at the five-yard line. It's going to be Prairie View ball. They'll bring it out. And a big stand-up at the 19-yard line. The, these receivers, these, these return men are, are really taking me for one right now because I can't understand why nobody just takes the 25 yards. Omari Hill Robinson with the stand up. And the new state of the art video scoreboard was installed last week, courtesy of Nevco of Greenville, Illinois. Founded in 1934, Nevco is the largest privately held scoreboard manufacturer in the world. The first Nevco scoreboard model consisted of a white oak cabinet with a glass dial clock and glass discs for scores. The introduction of LED message centers and video displays has provided clients additional ways to involve and excite fans while generating new sponsorship and advertising revenue. A uh, jet sweep there by the Panthers um, goes for about four yards. Yeah, almost four yards. And now Prairie View stunned a little bit, down eight to seven. 
against the 0-6 Wildcats. But again, if you're not going to come in and fully prepare for a team, they're going to catch you off guard. They've been on the beach. They've been on the beach. The That's world's so most famous beach. Let's, let's, let's hope they, they're still sun, sun drunk, and hopefully the Wildcats can put up another score on them. Jawan Pass. He'll step up in the pocket. He's got running room, but he's not going to take it. He'll chuck it down to the right sideline, caught at the 40-yard line, and taken out by Antonio Mullins on the reception. Now, that's going to hurt right there, and, and pass, pass doesn't look like he wants to run uh, too much, but he, he did on that play. You know, Jawan Pass, 6'4", 228-pound grad student, he's got the body to run the ball. He has 199 yards rushing on the season. So that is, that is he's, he's mobile, so we're going to need to put a spy on him and make sure and keep him in check. But on, on that play right there, the, wild, the last play where he ran, ran the ball, the Wildcats just lost contain. Something you can't do. So we have an injury on the field. As a, a Looks like Ahmad Antoine is down at midfield. 12.47 left in quarter number two. It's an 8-7 to seven lead for the Wildcats. If you don't trust Magadam to kick it, you trust Magadam to catch it on the two-point conversion. The trickery that they showed last week against Mississippi Valley State, but they never went through with a trick play. But they were successful in getting the snap off and the look that they wanted, and they took advantage. Yeah, the count was over, and, they, and like you said, they took advantage. The Wildcat. Wildcats have been running that play on, on, on field goals since the Jenkins, um, Jenkins era. And when you come out to the line of scrimmage, if, if you don't have the numbers or you don't line up against it right, they're going to run. They're either going to run it or throw it. Either way, you're wrong, and we're right. And I'm glad he was able to catch it for the two-point conversion. So Ahmad Antoine being helped off the turf. We'll get back underway second and eight for Prairie View A&M at their own 43-yard line. Pass to the left sideline. A little bit of running room for the first down, and he'll get out at Bethune-Cookman's 48-yard line. And now if you know, you've you noticed that the, the, uh, the Panthers have, have started to spread the football out and around <laughs> right now. So they're, they're moving a little bit more than they did their first three drives. But once again, we're up by one point. We're good. It's going to be third down and one. They're going to spot him about half a yard short of the first down marker. So it is third down and inside of one yard to go for the first down. Let's see what the Wildcat defense can do with this. And we have a timeout called by the Panthers. They didn't like the look that they had. Timeout. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was a timeout. Just a second the of the Wildcats were about to eat on that play. Um, it looked like Juwan Pass was ready to step back and throw that one instead of opting off. opting for a handoff and a run for the for the half yard. I thought it was going to be a draw. Um, that's why I thought he, he he took that posture. So I thought it was going to be a draw a draw on the play. But at third and one, I hope that. The Wildcats are able to stop them right here. That's going to be a momentum changer. The Wildcats already have 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 some momentum, but on this drive, especially uh, the last three plays, uh, the, the momentum is kind of shifting back to the Prairie View offense. So, like you said, on third and one, pass looked like he was dropping back to pass, but uh, I hope that they run the ball and get stuff. And I, you got to tap yourself on, on, on the shoulder pads right now if you're a defensive lineman and get in that backfield. So Jawan Pass is going to be set up in the shotgun on third and less than one yard. Two options to either side and one man in the backfield. Yeah, that's Jaden Stewart in the backfield. Stewart to the right. One man goes in motion back to the left side. And there is the handoff in the first down run, and Moore able to get through the defensive line. Yeah, Stewart is a big guy. That's a low back there. So now, big time run by Stewart to get the first down, and, and Moore. 
And now that, that you see, they had the bruiser in. So now they're going back to the mamba for, for, uh, for this first down play. LaDamian Brooks in the backfield with pass and the shotgun. First and 10. And there is LaDamian Brooks. He is snuffed out right at the line of scrimmage. Uh, that's why the Mamba wasn't in on third and one. <laughs> but he, he's back in on first down. It's going to be a loss of one on the play. But like you said, the Wildcat defense Brooks snuffed that one out. And let's see. And again, to Kevin Thomas in on that tackle. Tackle for a loss, second down and 11. Running clock with 11 minutes remaining in the first half. 8-7 lead for the Wildcats. Pass will reset. And the shotgun snap. He drops back in the pocket. Looks right over the middle and deflected a couple of times. And incomplete. There were three maroon jerseys huddled around one white jersey. And you can see uh, the Panthers were looking for a pass interference on that play, but... Uh, thankfully, there were no flags on the play. And that's going to bring up third down. So this is kind of the place that the Wildcats have been holding the Panthers in the first three drives, third down long. So right now, um, they're kind of out of field goal range. Pass dropping back. He's pressured into a check down route. There's a first down and a little bit more stumbling down to about the 17-yard line. And that's, that's, that's Mr. Stewart again. <laughs> Pass had to check down to his running back who was wide open. And he was able to pick up the first down once again and move the chain. Pick up the first down, get inside field goal range into the red zone. Oh, he did a lot on that play. Pick up the first down, get inside field goal range into the red zone. And he's still in the ball game. And he'll have the handoff. Fumble. Fumble. Ball is out. Wildcats will not pounce on it. Now they'll pick it up. After it pinballed on the turf for a while, it'll be Wildcat ball. Nick, he can do everything but hold on to the ball this drive. Thank you. Field is a fumble. I see that. Covered by the defense. First down. Oh, the cool. Take it in. And they're still fighting for possession of that ball, but the officials have already signaled Wildcat possession. Good job by the Wildcats. Malik Franklin able to pounce on that loose ball. First and 10 Wildcats, but they're deep in their own half at their own seven yard line. But a little, gotta be lucky to be good and good to be lucky. I like that, say that again. Gotta be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. Yes, sir. Did I, did I, did I jack that up? No, you got it. I got it right, okay. I'm not gonna use it every day, <laughs> but <laughs> it, sound, it sounds good. So, so good job by the Wildcats. Let's see what they can do. Come, and, and this is the field position that they've been in. Correct. With the return. And Devin Black is still in at quarterback as Kamari Everett, we're the tight running. end, moves to the left side. Yeah, we're running the ball behind him. And Jimmy Robinson is snuffed out again for a one-yard loss. Nowhere to go. Uh, you know, we've run that play four times already. And where, where Everett, uh, Everett and uh, Kyler Edwards start off on one side and then move to the other side and we run behind them. And Kyler uh, Edwards moves up because number three, Teron Mallard, is out of this game at tight end for Bethune-Cookman as well. We wanted to mention that. And he changed jersey numbers. Yes. So he's, he's, he's sporting that 89. I'm not sure how he fit into it, but he's sporting it today. And again, more motion to the left of Black. Second and 12. Black drops back. He's in the end zone. He'll send this deep ball all the way out. And it's well overthrown, intended for Dylan Lee. Right. He, he overthrew Lee. He had him. If he could, if he would have just threw it a little bit shorter. Now it's going to be third. And the Wildcats have to be, be, be careful here because uh, going into the, going into, which are back to the end zone, um, the offensive line has to be careful not to get a holding in the end zone. And we almost got one on that last play. And like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, our right tackle um, is having a problem. Jordan Cardi is having a problem on the edge with that defensive end. Third down and long, black in his own end zone. He'll send it to the right sideline. Nobody is home. 
And here comes the punt unit. And got to be careful here because multiple punts have almost been blocked in this game already. Automatically, when you said here comes the punt unit, in my head I thought here comes trouble because we are in the end zone. And there have been almost two block punts today. And now it, being in the back of the end zone, it only shortens the uh, – the, the length between, and they're going they're going all blocks. So the Wildcats try to spread it out to try and take some of those guys out of the box. And they're, and you see they're moving out towards the numbers to bring it out further. So we, we might be good. And Prairie View is going to attack what they thought was going to be the weak side of the line of scrimmage. And Lennon has to quickly send this away. That may have been tipped as this one rolls all the way out. That may have been touched by a Prairie View player. Wildcats think it's their ball. Oh, Wait, wait, we're going to see what it, oh, no. Oh. The Wildcats don't like it, but it's going to be Panther ball at the 41-yard line. Where's the booth review now? We are the booth. Review. We need to review. So the official, okay, so the official, they're, they're going to take a timeout, I believe. Good. And you hear the fans and I have everybody's booing. During the play, we had an illegal touch by the kicking team. Prairie View so take there's going to be a illegal touch out. spot. Oh, well, no. Well, we not. thought there was, but everybody's lining up. And <laughs> spectacular field position here for the Panthers after. I, I'm not sure why the Wildcats would have jumped on that ball if they didn't think it hit a Panther player. But Jawan Pass will step back in the shotgun hmm. pocket, deep into the end zone. Good broken play. up! Unbelievable defensive play. Great defensive play. Because he got mossed. But he made up for it. Great defensive play. Darnell Diaz with an unbelievable defensive play. That was a for sure touchdown taken away. Grand larceny. That's how you bounce back. That is exactly how you bounce back. I'm not... Like you said, maybe the, maybe the coaching staff didn't get a good look at it either because if if I'm Coach Sim, I'm calling timeout mm -hmm. to blow my nose just to give them a chance to review the play. Yeah. <laughs> so second and 10 from Bethune-Cookman's 41-yard line. Pass handles the low snap, Screen. sends it out to his, wide, to his running back, excuse me, and again, the Wildcats can't pick it up. It turns into a first down for the Panthers. So there was a, it, was, it was a screenplay to the left-hand side by the Mamba. And it looked like um, the Wildcats' defensive line figured it out, but they figured it out too late. And it allowed him to go underneath and get that, that yardage. But there looked like it was a block in the back, and it wasn't called. But you, you're not going to get every call. Correct. But this is the last two calls that we haven't gotten. So maybe the third is a charm. 15 seconds on the play clock, eight and a half left in quarter two, eight seven lead for the Wildcats. One man in motion comes back to the right side and pass will have the handoff to Ladimian Brooks and a short run on first down. That's a strong run by Brooks on that play, especially if, uh, on a first down play. Gain of four, second down, six. So second down and about six after the four yard run. The clock will continue to move, and we expected this out of Prairie View A&M, a run-heavy team, but I don't think what we expected was the arm of Jawan Pass, and we're going to see it here right over the middle, completed, and more yards after contact. It should have been taken down at the 11-yard line, but they make their way inside the 10 for Trayon Spiller. We didn't um, expect uh, Jawan Pass. I'm not sure why we didn't, and he's at almost 1,300 yards. He's, he's eclipsed that already for the season and uh, with, with his performance today so far. As they bring the ball down to the five-yard line. So but, it'll be second and goal for Prairie View A&M. But here's another thing. This is why, this is why I say, okay, the so Daniel Brooks is the, is the guy when it comes to running. But guess who's right behind him on the, on the list? Who you got? Juwan Pass. Oh, yeah. And Pass will 
make the handoff, but again, the Wildcat defense standing tall at the three yard line this time. Third down and goal. And that was that was Stewart again on the carry, Jaden Stewart on the carry, and, and I'm surprised that they're, they're, they're trusting him again uh, this quickly. But he is, he is the bigger back out of the two. So hopefully he has a short, uh, well, not hopefully. I mean, hopefully for them, <laughs> he has a short memory. And, and now it looks like. Be ready for LaDamian Brooks here. There's a oh, fumble. fumble again, a bobbled snap. Is this Wildcat ball again? It is. Unbelievable. I told you Ruling the on the field is the a fumble. The sky, it's by the defense. Dr. Bethune's statue First down, Bethune is cooking. here in the city. That is two possessions in a row. It's the mojo. The Dr. Bethune mojo. Unbelievable. That's exactly what it is. It's almost like the Bethune grill sauce. You sprinkle <laughs> a little bit on. Just a little bit. And it's magical. So the Wildcats have found magic. But that's a like, lot of magic. It's a lot of magic. What about Disney World? Do you believe in magic? So, listen, the only problem is... We're, we're at the, the one-yard yard line. line. <laughs> we're, we're looking at each other like, there's a slight <laughs> problem here. Because now this, this Wildcat offensive line, they need to stand tall. And again, Devin Black has now taken over this job. This is his third straight offensive possession. If, if I'm Coach Terry, I know it sounds crazy. But I go back to the formation with Everett out alone by itself and just throw it. Let's see what happens, because that right, uh-oh. And Quayshawn Bird, he's going to get room down the left sideline. He'll stay on his feet and finally taken down at about the 10-yard line. He's still up. He's still up. That's a heck of a run by Quayshawn. Second down and one coming up. Nine-yard gash by Quayshawn. That's a good job by that Wildcat offensive line getting out there, getting on some linebackers to, get, to spring them for nine. So from their own 10-yard line, second down and one after the second straight fumble recovery. You see him, right? Yep. <laughs> okay. And here's the pitch so to Quayshawn Bird. He's got running room down the left sideline, and he's forced out of bounds. Okay. So. And there's a late flag on the play, potentially a late hit out of bounds as a Panther comes peeling out of the Wildcat sideline. Yeah, and, and, and from the looks of it, it's going to be something that happened on the sideline with us. And it looks like the Wildcat coaching staff protesting their case, but that rarely works. Oh, and we will see exactly what Tony Ross has to say about this. Maybe it's a sideline warning. After the play, personal foul, offense mm. number one. It was that penalty will be half the distance to the goal. It's first down. Now, I didn't see what happened. I didn't either. There were an array of bur of burgundy jerseys on the sideline. But they call a personal foul on Everett, so I, I can only imagine what happened. He's a big guy. So I could imagine him blocking and pushing the guy on the sideline and not stopping. When you get to that sideline area, let's be honest, you know what you're doing at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just want to completely embarrass somebody at that point. And once again, we want to welcome everybody in watching SWAC College Football presented by Bethune-Cookman University, streaming on YouTube, Cat Eye Network, and the Wildcast. Five minutes and 21 seconds remaining here in quarter number two. Eight to seven is the lead for the Wildcats after tying the game up on a touchdown and a two-point conversion to gain the lead. First down. So first down and 10 after the personal foul, the first down stands and the half the distance to the goal. And there's a pass right into the hands of Kamari Averett, nearly underthrown by Devin Black. But it's another first down play for the Wildcats, getting out from deep in their own end. And at that point, Black didn't know whether, know whether he wanted to run it himself or, or get the ball off to Everett. He did a good job by giving the ball up to Everett. You always want to protect yourself as the quarterback. And there's another pass to Kamari Averett, fighting to come down with that ball. And they're still fighting for possession. Everybody just standing around. 
Everybody. And so it will be yeah. completed by Kamari Everett, and he'll come out real quick. Oh, yeah, he's tired. He's tired. 260 pounds, he's tired. It's hot. He needs a breather. Second down, six. And this is his formation right here with the three wide receivers up top and the solo receiver at the bottom. Well, Devin Black in the shotgun. And the Panthers are blitzing. He'll escape out of the pocket, and he'll move up and finally take him down in the backfield. He had an opportunity to get rid of it, but he held on to it for just that extra second. He did, and the, and the blitz was coming right off the top of the play. That was, that was his man on the end of the line of scrimmage that he was responsible for. Um, I'm not sure at that point, because it, it was a little delayed, but from the, from, you can see him coming uh, blitzing from the very beginning of the play. So again, a quick moving second quarter here. Three minutes and 25 seconds left with an 8-7 lead for the Wildcats. Third down and 12. And there is the handoff. Maybe we didn't know it was third down. And coming up at halftime, a conversation with the new athletic director, and head basketball coach here at BCU, Reggie Theus, a two-time NBA All-Star in 1981 and 83, played for the Chicago Bulls, Sacramento Kings, Atlanta Hawks, hometown Orlando Magic, and the New Jersey Nets, and he shares his version for BCU Athletics. That's gonna be a good one. I know the fans have been waiting to hear from Mr. Theus. And the Wildcats are forced to punt this one away, bouncing at the 35-yard line, corralled at the 33, and run out of bounds at the 42. So again, essentially a two-minute drill coming up for Prairie View, two and a half minutes left in the quarter. I, I think that drive would have been different. I would have ended different, and I actually think that we still would have been driving had Everett not got, gotten tired. Um, and that... That sounds crazy to put put the offense on on one person. He is that much of a game changer, though. He is, and I I, I honestly believe he he's gonna be the person this game that is gonna get them over the hump and, and provide that spark that they need, like he did at the beginning of the second quarter. So first and ten from their own 42, and the Wildcat defensive line says you will not get to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they stop him on that play for a loss of a yard. And like I said, this is the position that they've been in the whole game. And right now, they are the ones that have shot themselves in the foot twice. Second and 11. Pass handles the low snap. He'll step up in the pocket, fires a dart downfield, and that's going to be completed and run into the touchdown, into the end zone for the touchdown, excuse me. Jalen Howard able to rein that one in. The second extremely long pass from Jawan Pass. And the Panthers regain their lead 13-8 to eight with their own extra point on the way. Just as soon as I say they shot themselves in the foot, they took the bullets out, wrapped their feet up, and walked in the end zone for the second touchdown. <laughs> And let's say this, the two touchdowns that they, they, they have scored have not been extended drives. Correct. They've been long pass plays, but they have had some success with extended drives. They have not been able to finish in the end. But this time they didn't need, they didn't even give themselves a chance to get down there and fumble. And the extra point is good. So it's a 14 to eight lead for Prairie View A&M, but a minute and 50 seconds left for Devin Black to get down the field, and we know his number one target. I'm uh, 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 Everett. As I'm looking at Everett sit on the bench, I notice this extreme huge guy on the sideline uh, in, in his athletic wear. That's one of my former teammates, uh, Steve Bags. He is huge. Look at that. It's nice, to see, especially after homecoming. You wouldn't expect to see <laughs> most people come over here, but it's nice to see that fans are still coming out to the ball game. Oh, yeah. Not as packed as it was for the homecoming game last week, but the 
Wildcat faithful showing out. And Bethune-Cookman trying to give them the reward of their first win of the season. They're currently trailing 14 to eight. Yeah, with a minute 50 left to go. So let's see what the Wildcats can do on offense. And let's see if, if, if Everett is going to be that, that much needed spark. And right now, Patrick is, is, is warming up on the sideline. And he seems to be preparing to go back in, into this ball game. Um, Devin Black is standing over. Both of them are strapped up and ready to go. So I want to see who comes out this, this drive. This kick is going to go end over end into the hands, or over the head, excuse me, of Quayshawn Bird for a touchback. And Patrick is coming in onto the field, into the ball game. So maybe the Wildcats have gone to a two-quarterback system right now. And both quarterbacks are playing fairly well to this point. Just two passes that get past the Wildcats secondary are their difference maker right now. Right. Right. And 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 for me, I'm I'm I've never been kind of like as an offensive lineman, I've never been a fan of the two quarterback system. Because it's, it's it's almost like you have two bosses. And you know, one guy, he likes his coffee with sugar and cream, and the other guy just wants his coffee black. And it, it, it's hard to make that transition. They give you different type of feelings in the court, in the huddle. So it is Shannon Patrick in the shotgun. He'll step back, looks over the middle, sent to the right sideline, into the hands of Kamari Averett, and knocked down. Incomplete. When I was at BCU, I think we had three quarterbacks. <laughs> we had Alan Silver. We had Lawrence McLeod. And then we had another guy named Scott Austin. And Suba was a no-nonsense type of guy. He come in the huddle and say, shut up. Here's the play. Scott, he comes in, hey, big fella. <laughs> Everybody take a breather. All right, let's go. Second down and 10. Patrick again. Ooh. Miscommunication between Patrick and Cameron Overton. And oh, what happened there, Patrick got rid of the ball as he should after the three-step drop, and Overton still hadn't turned around. So one minute and 42 seconds left. Only eight seconds have elapsed. And this is, this is what, what we were talking about at the beginning of the game. The Wildcats are having trouble holding on to the ball, putting together long drives to help their defense out. We cannot afford to give the ball over here. And there is the handoff. There's a nice first down run. Out to the 35-yard line. Good Officially job. at the 36 for Quayshawn Bird. And another big halftime update, the BCU band performance, along with interviews with the athletic director and head coach of the men's basketball team, Reggie Theus, and also Dr. Hiram Powell, the interim president of Bethune-Cookman University, all coming up at halftime. So the Wildcats are, are in their own two-minute drill right now. And we converted on third down with Quayshawn. So that's good. So now we're moving the ball. And this is the time where your, uh, your tempo offense comes into play as the clock runs down under, under a minute. Now Shannon Patrick directing traffic at the line of scrimmage. He's taking too long. And there is the handoff to Quayshawn Bird. He'll be taken down short of the first down marker, so that will keep the clock running. The Wildcats will take one of their timeouts with 45.7 seconds left in the half, trailing by six. I, I feel like right now, okay, what is the objective as an offense? Score. That's your only objective always, right? Mm -hmm. So we're wasting too much time right now uh, to get these plays off. And then... At that point, with, with under a minute, on second down, we run the ball, which does what? Runs the clock. Right. We run the ball, that runs the clock. We pass the ball, incomplete pass, it stops the clock. So if our objective is to score within this one minute, we need to save all of the time that we can mm -hmm. save. And I don't think that's being, that's, that's being managed right now. It's not... It's, it's third and short. I can see us running right now on third and short because we just want to secure the getting the first down. But on that last play, I just don't agree with the play call. But once again, I'm up here. There's 
up here too and down there. But I'm not a coach, just a Madden player, you know. Just a Madden player. If I was playing Madden right now, I wouldn't have called time out because I would have been passing. So once again, 45.7 seconds left in the first half. Third down and two. Shannon Patrick, the screen pass to the left side. They'll pick up the first down, down the sideline and shrugged out of bounds. That'll get the first down into offensive territory. And what does it do, Terrence? It stops the clock. The clock is stopped. If he would have dropped the ball, the clock would have been stopped. But he did a good job making that pass, getting up. The chains are moving. 39.1 seconds left to go. And the Wildcats are trying to get it down. Look, look, okay. We're back. Everett, one-on-one -on -one against Williams or Jackson. Jackson against Jackson. One safety. They need to go to Everett here. That was Dakari Allen Johnson on that first down reception and run. And this one dumped up into the air. Kamari Averett fighting for it. He can't come down with it. Guess what? That was the right play call. Bad ball. Almost was an interception. But because you have this gargantuan, he was able to go play defense and Correct. stop the interception. And it looked like he almost He almost came down with reception. that. Shannon Patrick having to deal with the blitz coming his way. Right. And he's tired. Everett's tired. Everett is tired. So maybe they, they might not want to go. You can tell by his stand and his posture. He, he's winded. He needs to dig deep here. And they'll look to Everett again over the middle. Caught at the 25. He'll stumble down to the 20-yard line. Inside field goal range now. But again, the clock is going to be running. Right. 29.5 shows the clock. And they'll spike the ball. And Ever, Everett's trying to come out, I guarantee you. <laughs> he is gassed. <laughs> he is trying to come out. I don't blame him. It, it is hot out there. What was it at the beginning of the broadcast? Mid-80s, no cloud cover, essentially. There's a couple of clouds in the sky, but not enough for sustained shade. Right. There will be right. no foul for illegal substitution. And you know, you know what I Charge don't understand? Out to Prairie View. Um, for Prairie View. I take my safety and I put him over there with Everett. Why is Kamari Everett not double teamed right. at all times? Right. But I'm not, I, once again, I'm just a Madden guy. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> Clock I'm not there. Please reset the game. Clock Maybe it's something that, that we don't understand. Two, nine. But he, he has the potential to change this game for Bethune Cookman. And he's been left alone one on one with Logan. Uh, Jackson covering them. And there's a severe height advantage. And I just don't understand it. And we're going to see right now, right now this timeout, it was a well-placed timeout because, like I said, if that's your main guy, he's winded right now. Mm -hmm. So if the, if, if the goal was, let's call a timeout because they've been stubborn and they're going to keep that one high safety, let's get let's get Everett some, some time to rest. Great job, Coach. But let's see what the Wildcats do. They come out in the same formation with the, with the big bruiser in the backfield, and they, they're they not going to run right now. Ladarian Wilson is in the backfield with Shannon Patrick in the shotgun. Patrick hangs on to it, looks to Kamari Averett. 50-50 ball up in the air. Kamari Averett hit as he tried to come down with it. He was walking out of bounds anyways, but Kamari Averett may have the wind knocked out of him, and there's going to be a personal foul for a potential taunting against Prairie View as Kamari Everett is down, and that is the last thing you want to see. And I, I don't think he's hurt. I think he's tired. Um, it was a hit. The safety did make his way over there to make that play, but you're right. Conduct. There's going to be an unsportsmanlike conduct the defense on number them. Three. It's going to hurt them. Which this is half I can't distance understand. to the goal. 20-something seconds on the clock, First down. and you do that. The Wildcats have the opportunity now to, with two... Timeouts left? Is that two timeouts left? I believe there's only one timeout left for the Wildcats, but it is going to be first down and goal at the 10 yard line. Right. 23.9 seconds left on the clock, but you're without Kamari Everett. With whatever wind was left in there, it got knocked yeah. out of him. Yeah. He, so hopefully we'll see him back in the game in the second in half. the second half. Get halftime, rest up a little bit, and have one of the best second halves of your life. 
You have to. At this point, I think the Wildcats have some options right now. If I'm them, hey, on the scoreboard, it says two timeouts, but I could have sw swore we called two already. Mm -hmm. So uh, the scoreboard is just a uh, new scoreboard, you know, working fine. So Patrick, he'll look to Dylan Lee, just overthrown. And Lee stopped. Lee was supposed to keep going. That, that wasn't on Patrick. That wasn't on Patrick. That was on Lee. But again, the incompletion stops the clock, and we'll take another look at that hit on Kamari Averett. Ball in the hands, and yeah, just a shoulder right to the gut of Kamari Averett. No helmet to helmet, no potential for a head injury, but the wind just got knocked out of him. Yeah, and Everett saw that ball coming, and he also saw the safety coming and was like, oh, my God. And one, the ball wasn't important anymore. So, and, and he didn't make the catch. The catch was on his knees when he got hit. The ball was on his knees. And again, to the left sideline, but nothing happening for Dylan Lee as... Without Kamari Everett in that man-on-man -man coverage. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Logan Jackson is doing a good job. And here is Kamari Everett back in the game. Guess who's back? Third down and goal, 16.7 seconds left. And there is the final timeout call timeout. by Bethune-Cookman. Bethune Which, timeout uh, that, that timeout call right there. No. You see, it says that we have one more. <laughs> I don't think it was the final timeout. It, if I'm Coach Sims, I try and sneak Kamari Everett back in the game. Because everybody in the state, we've gone to the same spot three times, even with him, with him outside. It, and with two timeouts left on the board, we had time to, to, if we wanted to, run a draw play. Run, run, run the ball at least one time. Uh, that's been getting us five to six yards a pop. So we're going to see what they're going to come out and do. Um, after this timeout, maybe the last, I don't know. So are you going to the same left wide out for the third play in a row, even though it is Kamari Everett and the difference maker on third down and goal, plenty of time left if you throw the pass and it's incomplete for four down territory. Do you go for the same matchup on the left side or do you look for a screen pass on the right side? This isn't Madden. I don't know. <laughs> But if it was Matt, no, I wouldn't. I, mean, <laughs> I would be done. I, I would go up to my three receivers up top because right now those defensive backs, they, they realize that they're decoys right now. There's they actually going to be an open receiver on the right, right side. There's so only two defensive players over there with the three receivers. So we're winning up top right now. Right now the official is not over the ball. We need to go ahead and get it done. Yeah. Shannon Patrick looking to the right side. I, I think he sees it. The linebacker is trying to uh, inch over there. Okay. And he'll hang on to it. Good patience. Caught at the three-yard line. Fighting for extra yards. Taken down at the two. And do they have that one more timeout? I told you. Yes. Timeout. The phone cooking. That's the third and final timeout of the half. Okay. All right. So the new scoreboard is right. <laughs> Way to get it in here. Seven and a half seconds left. Again, fourth down and goal. So this is it. Hey, this is y'all better kick a field goal. <laughs> Once again, if this were Madden, you kick the field goal. You're kicking the go field to, goal? Go to half. Yes. Yes. My, I'm kicking the field goal. I'm kicking the field goal. Right now. But think about this. Magadam didn't even kick the point after. They went for the two-point conversion because he was 0 for 2 on both attempts last I week. forgot Magadam got him last week. I forgot. I'm going for it. You're going for I'm it? I'm going for it. Yeah, you have to. Because it's still a one-possession game right. either way. You're right. still trailing by one possession. And you get the ball back at halftime, after halftime. Because Magadam has yet to put a ball through the uprights between last game and the start of this game. So, so we're going, we're going, we're going back to that play, potentially. So two wideouts to the right. This may be in the hands of Quayshon Bird. Now the tight ends move to the right side. One man in motion. A little bit of trickery as Shannon Patrick dumps it out and it's dropped at the last second. Oh! He could have walked in the end zone and oh. tippy-toed and tap danced. Off the oh. fingertips. Oh, just missed it. And this will most likely be the final play of the 
first half with 2.7 seconds left. It'll be first and 10 for Prairie View at their own two-yard line. Wildcat defense, if they force the issue enough, is there's not really enough room for the quarterback to take a knee without being in the end zone. Yeah, not really, but they, they're 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 gonna run it. They're gonna run it. I, I can see them doing a, a a modified quarterback sneak. And the Panthers are just gonna try to get this into halftime, and the Wildcats will let them. Right. So that's gonna be the end of two quarters. At the end of the first half, the Prairie View A&M Panthers up by a score of 14 to eight over the Wildcats. The only difference is Jawan pass with two long passes for touchdowns. That Other is, than that, the Wildcat defense has stood their ground. That is the only difference, but that is a big difference right A big now. difference, That's yes. That's a big difference. But the Wild, like you said, the Wildcat defense has held their ground. And it has, had it not been for McGottam, we would be going, um, McGottam's performance last week, we probably would be going into this ball, into halftime with a score of 11 to 14. And that's what happens when, when, when coaches lose faith in you because you said last week he, he missed a point after attempt and a field goal. So we had to make adjustments. So hopefully the Wildcats go into the locker room second half and at halftime make those adjustments and come out with a different mindset. And at halftime, it is a 14-8 to eight lead for the visiting Prairie View Panthers over the Wildcats as you start to see the pride of Bethune-Cookman come out onto the field for halftime. Here at halftime, live with new athletic director and men's basketball coach, Reggie Theus. Reggie, thanks for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me in. I got a nice booth here. got air going and everything. We got a comfy little setup here. Mm -hmm. hey, don't we, Terry? Yeah, I got a little, little setup, a little bit. pictures on the wall and everything. That's it's nice. nice. Yeah, the level's good. You see the whole field. So the first question I want to ask you. Got no audio. So here at halftime with athletic director and men's basketball coach Reggie Theus. Reggie, thanks for joining us up here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You guys got a nice setup in here. Yeah. Got yeah. the air going, good view, the whole, the whole ball of wax. Just at about the, the 37 yard line, Terrence, we got it. We got so it I'm going to nice move over here. now. I'm at the 40 now. So <laughs> I don't know. I, you got you closer to half midfield. That's good. So, Coach, the, the first thing I want to ask you is what, what's the transition like? What, how have your, how's your first couple of months been here at, at the Tim Cookman? Uh, it's, it's been interesting. I've been staying in the hotel. Well, let's the, give the them a time. huge so Wildcat applause. Um, and my wife came in and said, she walked in the room and says, man, you really live here, don't you? <laughs> Especially. 
you know, the new thing, the portal. Recently named the number one HBCU marching band in the world by Black Excellist Wildcat family. Please welcome your marching Wildcats of Bethune Cookman University, the pride. Never had any problems recruiting kids. Um, you know, we've got a bunch of guys right now um, just getting to know them. Director of Bands, Dr. Donovan B. Wells, Assistant Directors, James Fotia, Pedro Ore, Breshawn Watson, Nikki Roberts, The Voice, Ken Moore. Now drill to a mashup tune. Frankie Beverly and Mays, Beyonce, Before I Let Go, and Cameo, Candy. This is something I've been doing all my life. And, and that's where I, I think I thrive best in this particular situation. And having the opportunity to have the hammer and the nail works really well for me. Now, transitioning away from the sports aspect and the, and the school in general, what does it mean to you to see Dr. Berthoon's statue in town and seeing the impact it will not only make locally but nationally? Well, for me, it's, it has a profound effect because I obviously didn't know a whole lot about the history before I got here. So learning the history, seeing the history, talking to people who have been involved in the history, it's, it's extremely touching uh, to hear the story, to hear the fights, to hear the, uh, you know, where she came from and her vision. Uh, for us to take the mantle and try to push this forward is a great task, and it's a great opportunity for us to do something really profound. To see her statue and to, to learn her story, I, I, I'm in awe of what, she's, what she accomplished in, in her time and the task that she's put in our hands. And Dr. Berthoon, such an influential person. I want to ask you, who's some of the more influential people in your life to help you get to this point? Gosh, you know, I go way back. I, I mean, obviously my dad was, was a huge part of it. He, he had his own janitorial service. I learned how to, you know, I learned how to, to, to sweep floors and run the buffer machine and do the big mop, mops at a very early age. So work ethic has been probably my mantra. Work ethic has been probably the thing that's got me through the most. Uh, I've had so many great mentors uh, over the years. And, I, and people that don't even, that I don't really know as well, but I watched from afar. Um, uh, so it, it's, it's, it's a number of different people. For me, my high school basketball coach was a huge part. So. Being mentored most of my life and understand that that's what I do now has just been a part of the, the, the whole scene for me. Um, so I've had a lot, of, a lot of pretty interesting people in my life. I love that. I love that. And the one final question I want mm -hmm. to ask you, um, as the new athletic director, what do you want to see the identity of the Wildcat athletic program become? Well, winning has to be the number one thing of course. that it needs to become. Uh, consistency is something that I, I tell everybody that's when you talk about professional sports in general the one thing that makes a great player is consistency we have to be consistent in the way that we approach our culture has to get better and we have to be consistent in the way that we approach our culture and that's the biggest thing for athletics for me is is the creating the culture of winning and academics Bethune Cookman, athletic director and new head coach for the men's basketball program, Reggie Theus. Reggie, thank you so much for joining us here. Gentlemen, thank you. Enjoy the rest of the game. We need a bucket here, or I should say a touchdown. <laughs> thank you. Checking it. Is that what they're doing?
of Timeless Classics, directed by the regular band, Dr. Donovan B. Wilson, Wildcat. Let it go. You know what time it is. Showtime. Industry baby, Lil Nas. It's a BCU family affair, Mary J. Blige. Let's get it drunk. Music from back in the day, getting played, rolling with kids and slaves. But we gonna do it live. Too short. Blow the whistle. Wildcat, ride out and let it breathe. we call pure funk. The undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of all college marching bands. practice like we always win. We perform like we never, ever lose.
there we go. Discount double check. The Wildcats receiving the second half kickoff, and they'll run it out to the 14-yard line, trailing by a score of 14 to 8. Nick Gimble alongside Terrence Gatling here for this beautiful Saturday afternoon. The Wildcats, two defensive failures on long passes that turn into touchdown runs, Terrence. But other than that, it's a pretty well-rounded game for this Wildcat team. It is. It is a very well-rounded game for the Wildcats. Hey, they're moving the ball downfield. They're they're getting uh they're they're, they're running a bit. They're moving the ball downfield, running the ball, and and they're successful in the pass game. If it's only the effort, but you know, hey, we're still getting it done. But Kamari Everett gets the rest that he needed for halftime, and Devin Black at quarterback. The screen pass to the left sideline and out to the 21 yard line second down coming up and the wildcats are going to need a, a whole lot more of that they're going to need to throw to other receivers other than than uh kamari everett and and that that's going to open up the run game and i i believe see, i believe right now the run game is, is wide open with them in the 4-2 defense and devin black will hang on to it thought about giving it off to Quayshawn bird but thought better of it and picked up two yards on the play it'll be third down and one you ever heard old people say uh, your first mind is your best mind mm -hmm. he should have gave that ball because because <laughs> Koi Shai would have would have got the first down he would have definitely got the first down there but Nick you said at the beginning of the second half that this is the Wildcat broadcast did you say that oh yeah you know I played for Patoka University so I am a little biased you know Feels good to be a Wildcat. There we go. And Quayshawn Bird ran it out. I'm not sure if he got to the first down marker or nah, not. He got he got about an inch on that play, um, and he he was stopped in the backfield. Let's see what the Wildcats are gonna do. Um, the no, offense no, looks no. like they're staying on the field, but here comes the punt team um, right now. And it, which they should. And this is what we've been talking about. This is something that's been plaguing the Wildcats uh, this whole football season in the time of possession. That drive, we had, the, we had the ball not even two minutes yet. One minute and 50 seconds on the drive as of now with a running clock. And so Ben Lennon will come out to send this away with the right foot. Three seconds on the play clock. They get the snap away. And an end over end punt. Fair catch called for at the 29-yard line, potentially the 28. Good punt from Ben Lennon there, forcing Prairie View back to their own end. And let's see what Prairie View comes out, um, the, the, the formation they come out in. Um, let's see if they go play action pass right off of the off the top because that has been successful for them. I want to see what pass. I want to see if that's an option. You got pass and the Mamba Brooks in the backfield right now, and four wide receivers set. So they might. Jawan pass in the shotgun. Prairie View A&M Panthers moving towards the east end zone. Pass over the middle, completed first down at about the 40-yard line. Pass complete over to Colby Washington. Hey, gain of first, uh, gain of oh, 10, 10, 10 on the play. So that's good enough for a first down. The chains are moving for the Panthers. One play, one first down. Three options to the right, one option to the left. Washington goes in motion and pass will give it to him on the screen pass and forced out of bounds after a four yard run. Great play, great play. 
And they're doing different things offensively right now coming out of the gate. So maybe they went in and they saw some different things and made some adjustments. And the Wildcats have not adjusted yet uh, to what they're doing. But like we said, the, at halftime, they have sustained drives. They have sustained drives. They Twice they fumbled inside the red zone and the Wildcats took over. So as, as, as Jawan passed fumbles right there. So that's going to bring up third down. So now they're in a position that they've been in the whole ball game, and I didn't get my flip chart at halftime to see the stats, but they have been in third down uh, more often than they, third down and long more often than I'm sure they want to be today, being a 4-1 and one team in the top of the SWAC West. So top of the SWAC West versus bottom of the SWAC East, but it's been a lot tighter than most people have anticipated. Right. So third down and six, Juwan pass. He'll go through the air, he'll check it down. There was an open receiver who had running room. That was number 88, Donovan White, but it goes off of his hand as pass sent it a little short, dealing with the pressure of the D-line. Yeah, he was able to, he was pressured on that play and Donovan had to get rid of the ball this time. He wasn't able to complete down. the pass uh, to his check down receiver, which, Hey, right now, the Wildcats are sitting in a good position coming out of halftime, and they're going for a block. The Wildcats are, are, are trying to block this. Shamar Minnis is back to receive this, but he's the only one that's not on the line of scrimmage. They do not get the block, and Minnis will call the fair catch at about the 17-yard line. Now, Minnis has been making me nervous today. He's been he he's been making me nervous with his decisions on on which which kicks he wants to field and but he did a good job right there fair catching the ball he didn't let it go over his head so the Wildcats are gonna actually have better field position it's not the greatest field position but it's better than what they've had all ball game long and let's see what quarterback I see Patrick standing in the back of the huddle uh, they're gonna go with Black again. So Devin Black for the second straight drive after Shannon Patrick Over. had the drive at the 30. end of the first the half. Will be a Got the Wildcats the into what Evidence would have been field goal down. territory if they didn't go for it on fourth down, and they got stuffed by the Panthers. And that, that was the talk of the booth uh, during halftime. Should they have kicked the field goal? Should they have gone for it? And I say kick the field goal. Why are we going? Did I miss something? Did we miss something? We're going backwards. And it'll bring Bethune Cookman all the way back to their own nine yard nine line. Yard line. Hmm. I didn't see a flag. Black with the handoff. And more running room to the left side, but the forward progress takes the Wildcats out to the nine yard line again. And he handed off to Ladarian Wilson. And uh, Wilson is the bigger back. Uh, Wilson out of out of the stable um, compared to Quayshawn Bird, and he wasn't able to get any yards, and he bounced it outside and thought he was going to see daylight, but then he got tripped up. Wildcats down 14 to 8. Second down and 10. Their second possession of the half. And the handoff again for a good five-yard run, four-yard run. Third down coming up again. The Achilles heel of this Wildcat team right now. But this is the thing. They're not. Then uh, we we constantly been in third down. Right now, offensively, we have not been able to keep them off balance and keep them guessing with our play call. Because right now it's third and five. What are we doing? We're going to pass. You see, Kamari Everett. <laughs> he's on. He's in a traditional position at tight end, and he's light, so he's going to be going out for a route. And Devin Black avoiding pressure, escapes the pocket. He'll send one deep downfield, and it's caught! Into the hands of Daryl Powell. First down completion all the way to Prairie View territory. So, so like I was saying, great completion, great way to evade the defense, great pass downfield, brings up first down. Now, if I am coaching, now it's time to throw the ball again. I don't run here. I don't run here. I keep them off balance with the pass because now they're like a big time pass. They're definitely not going to come out and throw again. You have to keep a defense off balance. So 
they can stay out of your backfield when you do want to run the ball. I don't want to run the ball of every time I come out on first and 10 because they're going to stack the box on me. I don't want to throw every third down because they're going to blitz me. Because what you also need to keep in mind is you need to start playing ahead of the chains right. instead of behind the chains. You, If you throw the ball on first or second down, then you have the opportunity to run on second or third down to get those yards back and then continue on. If you can get three yards of play, right. hey, you'll, you'll get... You'll get that first down. And uh, uh, like Larry Wesley would always say, behind schedule. Don't get behind schedule. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot of times what the Wildcats are doing. They get behind schedule. First down, run, bomb, negative three yards. Second down, bomb, three yards. So third down comes, we got to throw for 10. So the Wildcats come out in shotgun formation, four receivers. Let's see what they do. Devin Black with the first and 10. The handoff to Quayshawn Bird. He'll pick up. About seven yards on the run, make it eight. Just a beast in the run game. He is. He is. And like this is his senior season. And he has something to prove. Even though the Wildcats are 0 and 6 right now. Qua people like Quayshawn Bird and Jimmy Robinson, they are playing their hearts out because this is their last season. This is it. The next season is not guaranteed for them. So nine minutes remaining in quarter three. Devin Black, the handoff. Quayshawn Bird, the first down run. And taken down at the 31-yard line, move those chains. Another good run by Quayshon. I can remember being a um, being a freshman in high school, and one of my my quarterback, the quarterback, my quarterback, he came to me and he said, "If you had heart, you would be curse word, curse word." And I was like, "I'm a freshman. I got plenty more time." He said, "You selfish. You're selfish because this is my senior year." <laughs> And I could imagine the feeling that the seniors on this team are having right now. Mm -hmm. So Devin Black steps up in the pocket, right over the middle for Kamari Everett, goes through his hands, a, a rare missed pass there, and he is slow to get back to that line of scrimmage. And we have a, a player down, a Panther down. I think it was number uh, 22, Drake Cheatham. I think that was him. And as he was celebrating, he heard himself, the old Martin Grammatica. Um, oh, he, he's having cramps. I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't think a team from Texas would have much, have any problems with the heat um, because, you know, it's almost the same type of heat down in Texas. It's a, it, tell you what, driving to the stadium today, there was an intense amount of fog covering the stadium and covering the, the roads on the drive here through Daytona. And that, that humidity has, has stuck around. And it, it's taken an effect on these players with minimal cloud cover. And, and Terrence, you mentioned it, that, that Florida flu almost, the beach flu, as we get a beautiful shot there of the Daytona International Speedway host of the Coke Zero Sugar 400 and the, and the Daytona 500, some of the larger events there but the the florida flu relates to hydration starts the day before of the event so if you're not properly hydrating 24 hours before the event that's what happens and, and for athletes hydration starts it, it it does start 24 24 hours before the event but for athletes if you and i i don't even want to call myself i'm a former athlete and i drink a gallon a day so <laughs> hydration is 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 key period for, for, for athletes, period. Here's the pitch to Quayshawn Bird. He's got room down the left side, cuts into the middle, taken down at the 17-yard line. Move those chains. That offensive line on that play was definitely putting in some work. I saw Big Nick Ross. It looked like he took out two defenders and one of his own players. And now we've got a little bit of tempo as the official gets that ball set at the 17. Devin Black in the shotgun. One option at receiver on either side, Kamari Averett. Pushes out to the right. No one in the backfield now. We got an offensive lineman at receiver. <laughs> and a screen pass to the far side. There's blocking. He's go. Down to the far sideline. A little stutter step. They get to the end zone. It's a touchdown. But there's a flag on the play. Running it into the end zone is Dylan Lee on the check down screen pass from Devin Black. But this one might come back as there's also 
A Panther down on that right sideline. And everybody is standing there bewildered right now. Nobody knows what this flag is about. There was minimal celebration, so that's usually offense or something as the offensive lineman comes back with his hands in the air saying, dang. Now, you, you oh, mentioned that the... Offense, number 72. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mentioned what, what were you saying? You, you, you were mentioning the, the offensive lineman that kind of peeled away and was in a receiver position right. almost. Uh, and that block for, for Dylan Lee, may I thought it may have put the offensive lineman or a uh, non-receiver in a receiver position. I thought that may have been the flag, but the traditional holding penalty is so, what's called. So, okay. So you know, there are five men on the line of scrimmage. Uh, there there seven, have to be seven men on the line of scrimmage. So that doesn't, it, the offensive lineman can line up out there at, at receiver, as long as he stays on the line of scrimmage. And the only thing he did that play to kind of be a decoy was wave his hand in the air to, uh, to get the attention of the defense. But then they threw the ball the other way. So he was out there. It was big, big Nick Ross, the same person that I was talking about on the play before. But he was just out there as a decoy. Had they thrown the ball that way, then okay, let's go. He's going to block. But he can line up on the sideline on the numbers as long as he's on the line of scrimmage. And we get one more look There's at the this block run. in the back right there by Everett. Yep. There's two blocks in the back, actually. But I, you, of course, you can only call one. But I knew from the minute he got that ball, he was going to go into the end zone. I, I'm confused right now as the Wildcats come back out as, uh, with the first and 15. I don't know what's going to take place uh, play calling wise, but it looks like they're going to put. The okay, so Everett's going to go into the slot. I would put it in the hands of Quayshawn Bird. He gives you eight eight yards a run, gets you back inside of 10 yards for the first down marker, because that's what you also are playing for here. But Devin Black's going to hang on to it, and he'll be sacked in the backfield. Big loss. Second down in a mile. Yeah, and this is the, here we go again, shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, the thing with the offensive line, um, at right tackle, he's been he's been having trouble. Jordan Cardi's been having trouble all ball game long, um, but this time, Black was taken down by a defensive tackle. In situations like that, like you said, they should have handed the ball off to take some pressure off of that offensive line. And we have an aggressive defense. You want to run draws. And there's the pitch to Quayshon Bird. He's got no blockers in front of him. No, he had blockers. As he, he Jimmy had. Robinson, excuse me, on that run, but it's going to be now extra long third down. Yeah, he definitely had blockers in front of him. Yeah, Mr. Ross to escort him. But what happens a lot of times with us big guys, we get out there on those defensive backs, and they kind of do that little chuck move. And, ah, a little ah, stutter step. Hey. What can you do with that at 300 pounds? <laughs> Nothing. So third down and my best approximation is about 23 yards. So Devin Black, he'll go through the air to the left sideline and his receiver fell down on the route. Daryl Powell stumbled to the turf and there was no receiver in the area because of it. Okay, so this is the, this is the point in the ball game. As you see, Powell is coming off a little disappointed, right? Of course, because he just slipped down on the route. The Wildcats blew their field position and a chance at scoring. But right now, I still think that they're in a good position as the offense comes back on the field. The Wildcats are in four-down territory at the offensive 31-yard line and fourth and 23. So cancel my comment, because I was going to say they could pooch punt and it would still be good with field position. Five receivers, and now the timeout's going to be out. called by Terry Sims. That's the okay, they're going to think about this. Okay, so I was going to say, there's a flag on the play, so we, where's the flag? Did we run out of time? Or almost run out of time? So I was going to say let's pooch punt, try and pin them down in the end zone. So... If we go for it here, we're at the 30-yard line. If we punt it and it goes in the back of the end zone, let's just say, they're going to bring the ball out to the 20, 25-yard line. So five yards is going to be the game line right here. Actually, six yards right now is where the ball's sitting if we go if we go um, out. So I guess Coach Hill rather try and take a chance and say, okay, forget the six yards. 
let's try to take a chance right here because six yards is not going to make that much of a difference if we come out of punt in the back of the end zone. Your defense has been oh, successful that, on, on punts. Look at what. <laughs> look at what's going on. There we go. We've got a field goal attempt. It's going to be about a 48-yard field goal attempt here for Dylan McGottam. Good snap, good hold. The kick is blocked. And a chance for a return from the Panthers here. Down that left side, it's into the hands of Bryce Turner. Turner's going to try to return this all the way to the end zone, and it's a touchdown for the Panthers. And the only thing I can do is shake my head. SMH right now. That was disaster. That was the worst possible thing that could happen for the Wildcats right there. I would have rather them try and uh, pooch punt. But got them. First field goal attempt since last week. And you got to wonder if that's on McGottam for not getting the ball up in the air fast enough or if the, the offensive line and the blockers just couldn't keep the Panthers from, from getting up in the air. Mm. Maybe we'll get a chance to see it on replay so we can see what, what actually. But Bryce Turner, ever opportunistic for the Panthers. Now it's a 20 to eight lead with the extra point on the way from Luis Reyes. And early motion on the line is gonna not matter as the extra point is good, 21 to eight. Okay, so now this is the point in the game. You're down 21 to eight with an 0-6 mentality starts to kick in a lot of times. Uh, we were talking before the broadcast, and you asked me, and you asked me during the broadcast, do you have an advantage when it comes to being an 6 Yes, because you have nothing to play for. The disadvantage is when you get down, you still have nothing to play for. <laughs> so it's going to take, and like we said, the Wildcats are a second-half team, fourth-quarter team. They pull this stuff from out of their ear when they need it. But is it going to be enough? And you know, Offense, defense, special teams, it, three plays. Right. Two unbelievable long passes right. from, from Jawan Pass right. that both turned into touchdown runs. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't like it was a, a long pass and then red zone and then two plays mm -hmm. into the end zone. It was two long passes into the end zone for Jawan Pass. Right. And then a special teams miscue. Right. Both the offense and the defense against the number one team out of the West. Mm -hmm. It's been a good game, but the scoreboard just doesn't show it. That's where the mentality starts to set in. But that's the difference between being the number one team and being the number five team when you're able to overcome adversity. Mm -hmm. So right now, the Wildcats come out and score right now. Hey, they're back in it. Correct. Then the, then the mentality goes back to, we're fine. We're still in this. <laughs> right. Right now, if they don't, that's where the problem kicks in. So with 6.05 left in quarter three. Let the ball go out of bounds, please. That ball is going to go out of bounds. That should bring it out to about the 35-yard line. So, so the Wildcats are good, and, and, and we're going back to Black. But Black is Black is strapping up. He's going back in the game right now. Which the Wildcats didn't have a bad drive last drive. They just they shot themselves in the foot a couple times. Um, got some penalties and. Were, were pushed out of range. Yeah, that, and that's the other thing, too, we haven't mentioned other than when it happened was the, the touchdown run from Dylan Lee that got called back, shooting yourself in the foot. Right. And that, that's something that, that, that has plagued them all season. So it's six minutes and five seconds left on the clock. So that's six minutes and five seconds before the Wildcats go in and put on a Superman jersey. So hopefully they can hold them until the fourth quarter or until they decide to wake up. And it looks like... Or until Quayshawn <laughs> Bird decides he wants to run for another eight yards. I was just about to say, it looks like Quayshawn is putting it on his back right now and saying, let's go. Like, like it's, it's a different type of mentality when you're a senior. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's Quayshawn Bird for the first down, out to midfield, to offensive territory. There goes Quayshawn Bird down the right sideline all the way to the 19. Great run by the old man Quayshawn Bird. And looks like Jimmy Robinson. Quayshawn might be tired. Look like, looks like Jimmy Robinson Bird is coming in. Another uh, fifth-year senior. As I think it's going to be a, another injury. 
Now, you know some of this stuff now. I believe football players, what people don't know is, football players are very theatrical. They're almost like soccer players. You ever see when the soccer players get hurt <laughs> and they roll around on the floor? So if you're gashing me, here's the play right here again with Quayshawn. I mean, he got that handoff at his own 40-yard line, got hit at the 49, and said, uh-uh, I ain't going down. Ran all the way to inside the 25-yard line offensively. And like I said, this is a different type of mentality coming from Quayshawn. Um, he, he's a senior. This is his last year. Right now, they're, they're down on the scoreboard. He has a, a point to prove because this is his legacy right now. This last season is because is, nobody, nobody's going to remember what Quayshawn did last year, two years ago. They're going to remember this season. And especially him, he's going to think back to this season. But what I was saying, if you're, if you're gashing me as a defender and we have no answer for you, yes, I'm going to lay on the floor and roll around. To, to give us some time without calling the timeout. So sometimes that, that happens a, 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 a lot. And I think, I think they may be cramping. They may be. But they're trying to slow down this Wildcat offense. Mm -hmm. And it's a Wildcat offense that wants to play with tempo right now, but they're in some choppy clock area right now. And Robinson with only a one yard run Unable to find the gap at the line of scrimmage. Second and nine at the 21-yard line. And that's Jimmy. One yard. And I, I, Okay, so it'd be, in, the, in the beginning of the game, I talked about how offensive linemen see quarterbacks. When you see running backs, it's almost the same thing, but it, you want to know that the guy behind you is going to gash him. Two options to either side of Devin Black. He'll send the screen pass to the left side. Here's Daryl Powell, the stiff arm. He gets around a man and taken down at the last second. A desperation tackle from Jemias Presley. He almost scored. That was close. It was very close. And that's what I was saying. If the Wildcats come out, don't hang their heads, they're back in this ballgame. And with the right amount of time because they're still coming into their power quarter. Yep. They're still coming in four minutes and 31 seconds before Superman comes out. So first down and goal from the three yard line. Oh my gosh. And I'm not sure if that came across the broadcast, but the, the frustration is there by the coaching staff. You're at three-yard line, false start. And so that will back up the Wildcats to the eight-yard line. And that'll change up the play calling a little bit. It has to. It absolutely has to. But with the way the Wildcat receivers have been playing, I say put the ball in the air. We're, we're, we're in a position. They got Jimmy Robinson in the backfield. Black at quarterback. And they're going to run the same play that they were going to run. Maybe the toss. It is Robinson through the line of scrimmage into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Great job by that offensive line, that right side of that offensive line, moving those bodies and Jimmy Robinson getting in the end zone. And guess what? The Wildcats are still in it, down by seven. So here, so now, got him. Got him has to kick this to stay up, to stay ahead. Because if the Wildcats score again, we'll be up. It's a seven-point deficit right now, but Magadam has an opportunity to make it a six-point deficit. The PAT. Shannon Patrick, the hold, the kick is up, and it's through the uprights. Not only needed for the Wildcats, but needed for Magadam just to get a little mojo back. And it's a 15 to 21 deficit for the Wildcats. 344 left in quarter three. They're not even in their best quarter yet. They're you not. They're not in their best quarter. And got them, got them in a good way this time. Yes. So we are going into the Wildcats strong suit. So the Wildcats are in a good position right now. For me. Maybe not for anybody else. But for me. But on, I, paper. On, on paper. On paper. On paper. They are in a good position right now. Because every fourth quarter, they seem to come back. So I was telling you at the beginning of the broadcast, I watched on the ESPN ticker, the football go back and forth because cable is very expensive. <laughs> so I watched on the ESPN ticker when they play Utah. 
I turned off the ticker because we were getting blasted. I turned back on the ticker, and we came back. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. That's, that's this team's identity. That's what they do. So as, as Coach Yogi Jones, I know my offense and my team is not going to wake up to the fourth quarter. I just got to hold them to a certain amount of points until we get there. Because sometimes you got you to go with the cards that you dealt with. This is the team that we have. Yep. So if we know they're going to wake up in the fourth quarter, we have to do different things to try and hold the ball to the fourth quarter. Xavier McDonald to send this one away. Great kick. End over end, handled at the oh, five bobbled. and bobbled. At the 10 yard line, there's contact. Stood up at the 13. Great job by his teammates rallying behind him to, uh, to get him, get up, and okay, we're gonna celebrate, but we're gonna do it as we go to the sideline so we don't draw any flags. Cause he, he looked like he was about to get one right there with the taunting. Looks like Cameron Ingram on that final tackle. Now, just to give everybody listening just an idea of what we mean when we say that Bethune-Cookman is a fourth quarter team, here is their score by quarters. 27 points in the first half. Now, this is total through the season. 27 points in the first half, or first quarter, 31 in the second quarter, 29 in the third, 55 points throughout the season in the fourth quarter. So they have yet to play their best football and the defense with a good stand up on first down, it's gonna be second and nine. They have, like you said, they have yet to play their best football on the season and in this game. And I think they're sitting, make no mistake about it, that, that Prairie View uh, and them sideline, they're shaking right now. Because this is not the position that they thought they were gonna be in coming into this ball game. Jawan Pass with the handoff and the pitch went all the way back to LaDamian Brooks. He'll get the first down out to the 27. That was a good play. The Wildcats kind of played that option um, the wrong way. And they had they they had it set up where they had a man, a pitch man, a, a man on a pitch man and a man on a quarterback. But for some reason both of them took the quarterback. So now Prairie View Air A and M slowing things down. Juwan Pass directing traffic in the shotgun. And the handoff goes for a one-yard gain. And if, 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 if I'm Prairie View, I'm nervous right now as Benjamin um, or Eddie Walls made that tackle because this is the position I've been in all game, second and long, outside of my magical passes that have gone for 80 yards. And a blocked field goal. Right. Oh, I forgot about that that quick. Oh, man. <laughs> now, Jawan Pass from the pocket, pressured from behind, flushed out, picks up one yard on the play to, to avoid the sack. Big third down. Now, I'm in third and long again. That was Walls on the play again. So now, do they have the magic? We know some of these kids, it's probably their first time in Florida. They probably, you know, had dreams of going to Disney World their whole life. Let's see if they believe in magic right here and can pick up a third down, but I don't think so. The Wildcats in a 4-3 defense and blitzing. Showing pressure. And they'll come with five. Pass over the <laughs> middle, tipped, incomplete. I told you. I told you. And that's exactly what the Wildcat defense needed. That is exactly what this Wildcat, with one minute, 12 seconds left before they come into. Before their best quarter. Right. And, and here, go, here goes the, the, the pride. They play the short tag of, of let's go Wildcat. And here we go, the Wildcats again showing pressure on this punt. They'll send the entire unit not blocked as Shamar Minnis Please. goes all the way back to the 20. He'll corral it at the 15. Tries to avoid pressure taken down from behind at the 17 yard line. Minnis has been making me nervous, man. I said it before. Now that ball, to feel that as it's going over your head, knowing that if I touch this and don't catch it, I'm done for. Mm -hmm. 
it's something about flirting with that destiny that just doesn't sit right with me. This is it's like with the exception of maybe one punt, that's been a been a been a been a been a decision that he's made. And I'm glad he did it there because that that ball could have very well have, have rolled down to the one yard line. I was gonna say <laughs> it, it it bounced at the twenty around the twenty three, so it may not have made it to the goal line. So high risk, high reward. But it's a first down at the seventeen yard line. Only a minute remaining in quarter number three. Mm. And Quayshawn Bird fighting for every blade of turf for a four-yard gain. Relentless. He is relentless. And the walkout offensive line looking a little sluggish. I see some hands on the hips. I hope, ho hopefully they, they've been they've been watered down on the sideline. Well, the Wildcats only had one offensive possession last week against Mississippi Valley State. And now this offense has been out there for a while. They've controlled the pace of this third quarter, I'd say. Wait a minute. Did you say one possession? One possession. Now this pass out to Daryl Powell. Did he get the first down? Ah. Yes. Yep, They'll move the chains. They'll stop the clock for about half a second to allow the chain gang to get set. And I believe the Wildcats... They're going to show that they're going to go for one more play. And they're just going to let this clock run out. After three quarters, that is the, end the Panthers of the third are up quarter. by a score of 21 to 15 over the Wildcats. But they will have a fresh first down at their own 27-yard line. As we take a look at the stadium, uh, the fans are here. They're still here. As the Wildcats are coming into their power quarter, as you said, 55 points on the season have been scored in the fourth quarter for the Wildcats. And, and, and you said the Wildcats had the ball. One possession. Yes, last sir. Week in the fourth quarter, in the second half. Mississippi Valley State absolutely dominated the second half. And it's part of the reason that the Wildcats lost their 14-7 lead that they had at halftime because Mississippi Valley State was able to just control the pace of play kind of like the Wildcats did. It was more even throughout this third quarter than it was off kilter like it was last week. But Mississippi Valley State just controlled the tempo and controlled the ball for almost the entire third quarter. And the Wildcats had a single possession in the third quarter. So already improvement throughout the game. And as you, at, at, right now we're looking at Bethune Cookman. But as you saw before, Alcorn, uh, not Alcorn State. <laughs> it mess, it's the same colors. The same colors with Prairie View and Alcorn. So I, it, mental laps real, really quick. They're getting hype on the sideline, and I, I guarantee you the message is this is championship football because every championship football team has to overcome some type of adversity at some point in the season. And right now you're on the road up by uh, six points to a team that on paper you should be blowing out, and you're not. And the, that record only matters so much. No, it only matters to the game starts. So again, a first down for Devin Black and the Wildcats. The low snap, the handoff, Quayshawn Bird running room right down the middle, stood up after gaining the first down again to the 40-yard line. And again, another player is on the ground. With a, and it looks like he's holding his, his leg. So Bryce Turner, who ran that blocked field goal back, which is now the go-ahead score, for the Panthers, he is down at around the 40-yard line. So unfortunate for Prairie View A&M. And he he tried to get up, and they they and and I guess he thought about it and said, oh, oh, oh no, and then he laid down again. But now he's, he, he's going on walking off to the sideline. And it, even if he wasn't hurt, he was gonna have to after the, the medical staff came out there, he was gonna have to leave for a play. Correct. Anyway. Takes seven seconds off of the clock here in quarter number four. The Thune Cookman Wildcats looking for their first win of the season, down by six. First and ten from the 40. Two options to either side of Black. The handoff to Bird does not go. Black to the near sideline, completed. And the first down, a little stutter step. Running room to the opposition 40 yard line. What a run from Cameron Overton. That was a big time play by Cameron. He came alive when he caught the ball and went up the field and got the Wildcats first down. Wildcats are rolling. Power quarter. 
Same setup at the offensive 39 yard line officially. And they're blitzing. They look like they're sending everybody and the Wildcat receivers are pointing it out. And again, Kamari Averett in one-on-one -on -one coverage, but Black goes to the left sideline, deflecting, picked off. That hit the helmet of a Wildcat receiver, went right into the hands of the Panthers, and they're gonna run this all the way back for a pick six. That's How unlucky can you get? That Right, right. That's one of those freaky plays and, and and look, he's cramping too in the end zone. That that's one of those freaky plays that you can't that you can't control just like a oh wow, that really happened. That ball hit the helmet of the intended receiver on the far side and bounced right into the hands of the Panther who ran it back for a pick six. You can't make this stuff up. On Matt and you can. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> This is real life, and sometimes these is things it? happen. I don't, you know what? I a, don't a know. Block, a blocked field goal Two, return for a touchdown, return. a pass off of an offensive for helmet, at for right, a right place, right time for a touchdown. Right. And we were running the same play just to the other side of the field. And so with the point after try on the way from the 10 yard line, and we have movement on the Prairie View line. And you you know the thing that I, I see right now, still, still, All -star. still. Offense, I, I haven't seen them hanging their heads on the sideline like, oh, man. Free play to try. That, that's one of them things that it just, it happens. It sucks that it happened for a touchdown. But I don't think that this is a deficit that they can't overcome knowing their uh, fourth quarter uh, potential. So the false start will send the PAT back by five yards. Oh. Nah, and what happened here? It was offsides. And you know what it is? It's, it's a little bit of on um, the tempers flaring for, for, for cause, because on a play before, Wall, Offside. which wasn't even a play on Defense, a false start, number nine, Wall was going in, pushing the offensive lineman. So it must have been some try. words back and forth. Because just now, he just blasted him for no reason. So Reyes, for the third time potentially, will try to send this PAT away. Good snap, good hold, and the kick is good. It is a 28 to 15 lead, so it's again a two possession game. With plenty of time on the clock. In the Wildcats best quarter on paper. Right, on paper. Plenty of time on the clock for the Wildcats. 15 to 28. Now, now, Nick, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to tell you when I get nervous. I'm not nervous. I'm not. I think the Wildcats are going to be able to still, in this fourth quarter, put themselves in a position to win the ball game. Now, is it going to come down to the last drive like last week? I believe so. That's the position that the, the that, that, that's the way the ball bounced just now when it bounced off of his helmet into the arms of the Panthers into the end zone. So this game is going to come down to the wire. Somehow, some way. And, and like we've been saying, it hasn't been spectacular drives. The defense for the Wildcats have been spectacular, in my opinion. Just two miscues in the secondary and a fluke bounce on, a pen, on, the, uh, on the field goal block mm -hmm. and something you can't make up on a... Right. On a What's going to go down as a pick six turns into a bounce off of a helmet. Let's not forget about that first interception that was also magical. So maybe they did go to Disney World while they were here. Maybe. But maybe. again, th this, for lack of a better term, collapse on the scoreboard all mm -hmm. started because the Wildcats got into the end zone and the touchdown got called back for a holding penalty. Right. So what, what could have been is, is only in the rearview mirror. Now you've got to move forward, and there's still the entire fourth quarter to play. 13.57 left in this fourth quarter, down by 13. And Quayshawn Bird smartly going to let this drop in the end zone. Out to the 25 we go. And the Wildcat offense gets off the bench and starts, <laughs> starts to come into the ball game. And, and, and let's see which quarterback we're going to go with because it looks like Patrick Still has his helmet off. Correct. Shannon Patrick holding his helmet. I don't see Devin Black. That's not to say he's not in there. Oh, there and he there, he, there he comes into the huddle. 
Yeah, he just walked into the huddle. So I, I've never I've never been a quarterback unless I was playing Sandlot. So I don't know the type of mentality he's coming in with after that interception. I don't know, does that deflate you or 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 what? But hopefully he can bounce back from that interception. So first and 10 from the 25, down by 13. Black the handoff and snuffed out in the backfield. Mm, nothing there for Ladarian Wilson. Nothing at all. He lost yards on that play. He lost about two. Second and 12 coming up. And this is what, what we were talking about earlier about the Wildcats being behind schedule. Second and 12 for the Cats. Now they've got to hope for a, a much larger than normal gain to try to make it third and manageable. Right. And, 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 and now that you're behind schedule, okay, now everybody knows you have to pass. You have to pass. Black looking over his options. Out to the right sideline. Overthrown the intended target of Dylan Lee. Now that was a good pass, and Lee actually had his, had his, had his uh, man beat on that play. And Lee's going to walk off. I guess he needs a breather as this third down and long comes up. Now this is the type of thing where I say, where I say people start, uh, players start hanging their heads on the sideline because Lee doesn't look like he's enthusiastic about getting back over at all. But again, it's just one of those mental things there. What, what else can you do? Right. Yeah, that, that's where you've got to snap yourself out of it, get up for that next play. Right, and that, that's the hard thing to do. It's a, especially if you're playing for a national championship at this point, yeah, it's easier. Black, unable to avoid the sack. The Wildcats are going to go three and out. And Prairie View A&M has just turned this game upside down and really taken Bethune-Cookman emotionally out of it right and it, it looks like they can they, they're a little little uh emotionally in the tank or that their, their emotional emotional tank is on e right now so it's going to be up to the wildcat defense to get a little bit of the momentum back as this is an amazing punt handled at the 33 yard line forcing prairie view about halfway into their own half yeah, like you said, it's going to be up to the Wildcat defense to try and create that spark or any kind of spark. And they've provided it through this game. Again, the defense has played very, very well. Just two miscues in the secondary and then special teams and a, and a fluke interception. That's, that's just got to, what, it, what you got to keep telling yourself. That's why we keep repeating it, because it, if you just say, oh, well, the, the world's out to get us, then you're, then you're out. Right. So, uh, so right now we might have to... Let me see. Let me, we might have to dial up for a, a defensive touchdown. We're out of position right now. So Jawan passed the check down route over the line of scrimmage for a two-yard gain, potentially three to the 36. That could have hurt the Wildcat offense because they had three receivers to the bottom with only two, with only two, with only two uh, defenders. So a three-yard gain, I'll take it because we were we were definitely out of position. So now Prairie View A&M with clock management skills trying to kill as much as they can. 12 minutes left in quarter four. They have the 13-point lead, and they'll make the handoff snuffed out by the Wildcat defense. Nowhere go. to go for LaDamian Brooks. Now this is a big-time third-down play coming up because we're still going to be inside of 10 minutes. If they can stop them here, they're still going to be have to still have more than enough time to get back into this ball game. Only a two possession game at the moment. And like like you said, outside of last week, you know, with that, I've never never heard of a team one time in in the second half outside of last week. So they definitely have the two possessions that they're going to get two possessions. They just have to capitalize. Right now, the defense needs a stop. And pass is coming down. Let's see. Oh, he, they got the timeout. Timeout. They got Prairie the timeout. View. I was just it's about to say the 25-second clock is running out on them. But they were able to call the timeout. So that is Prairie View's first timeout of the half with 11.04 left. 
It's very interesting. So, so the Wildcats play the top of the West this week. As as we we get a shot of the camera crew on the fourth floor, but then next week the Wildcats play the top of the East. And not next week. Is it the next week or the week after? Jackson State is next week on the road, and then second in the West, Alcorn State, they host. So quite a difficult schedule for this Wildcat team, including today. Right. And I think, I think, it, like I said before, Coach Sims has been in this position before. Coach Sims comes in with a record of 34 and 21. His first season, out the gate, bam, 9 and 6. Second season, start off 0 and 6. Win the last four ball games, finish 6 and 4. Then, since then, the Wildcats have put have won seven ball games every year. So right now, I'm a, I, I believe when you first come out the gate, playing the teams up kind of kind of does something for your confidence. That's why bigger teams always play down a lot of times in the first few weeks to try and get some of that confidence for the team. Jawan Pass, he's going to look deep downfield on the right sideline. There's a flag for pass interference. Yeah, he didn't turn around at all, and it looks like he, he pushed uh, the receiver. He didn't turn around and look for the ball at all. And the officials are, are meeting up about it. Be, matter of fact, I don't think he touched him. I think that, I think he had his arms up in the air to signal, no, I'm not pushing him, but the, the body position, not even attempting to go for the ball is what does it. You think that's what he was saying, no, I'm not pushing him? Yeah. So I'm in your face, right? You're trying to catch the ball. No! No, no, I'm blocking all. you so you can't see the ball coming. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's what the arms up in the air means, is I'm right, not in the right, way. Yeah, oh, you're right, right. I'm, I'm doing right. And I think that's what the conversation is right now. Because I wouldn't be surprised if they said there's no penalty for, what do they call it, face guarding? Oh, wait, the Wildcats are celebrating. Let's see. Once again, Tony, Ru Tony Ross, the head official for this afternoon. And the Wildcats have, co have come back like, okay, they got to punt this. And they're sending the punt return team on the field. There's no foul for DPI on this play. However, no foul. there's a sideline warning against Prairie View. It will be fourth down. There we go. He didn't touch them. That's what the arms up in the air means. I, I I'm get not it in the way. I get it now. Okay, so I'm going to do that. It's the theatrics that you mentioned earlier. Right. I'm not in the way. Okay, I got it. So right now, okay, so they have to punt, punt, punt the ball from the 35-yard line. With 11 minutes remaining in this fourth quarter, plenty of time. Plenty of time. Especially if they get a big return. And the, and, and the referees, all, all, all of the officials are on the sideline huddled up with Coach Dooley, I'm sure, trying to explain themselves. Everybody was ready <laughs> for the snap, too. And the umpire had to tell everybody, back off. I've got four of my teammates over on the on the Prairie View sideline dealing with the coaching staff. So you, you know umpires are like former offense and defense alignment. They're not doing all of that running. <laughs> he couldn't care less what, what they have going on over there on that sideline. So he, he's standing over the ball in, in, his, in his area, in his habitat. And Coach Dooley is pleading his place. When I, pe pleading his case, I've seen, I've seen personally, an official overturn a call after one of the coaches went over there, and and you know usually they're not trying to hear it, but I've seen an official overturn a call after one of the co after a meeting like that. I have not. That's one of the rare things in sports that the coach is able to overturn the official. You have not been around Bethune Cookman football. That's not. <laughs> You haven't seen Coach Shine Wyatt in action. I, I have seen it. So Shamar Minnis back at his own 15, waiting for this spiraling punt. The fair catch called for at the 24-yard line as more pushing and shoving. After the fair catch will evaporate with 10.51 left in the fourth quarter. So the Wildcats are still in good position, 10.51, like you said. They, they're going to get two, two, two possessions, maybe three. So they need to 
score here. That's that's a must right now. As in the backfield, we have it looks like. Well, I, I thought initially it was Dylan Lee going to the backfield, so that must mean uh, Jimmy is in the backfield. Devin Black, the handoff. Here is Jimmy Robinson mm. to the right sideline, a little stutter step. That's oh, Quayshawn Bird, Quayshawn. rather. It's Quayshawn Bird with the huge run. Out to the 43. Now, this is where you go tempo. This is when the tempo comes in. Especially with the run game that's been successful. Right. Referee, move from over the ball. We hiking right now. Let's go. Because you're keeping them off balance now. First and 10 at the 42. Black to Bird. And there was just nowhere to go at the line of scrimmage on a one-yard gain. And, and still, big guys, get back on the ball. Let's go again. Because eventually, we're going to catch them. And they, they slow it down. But they, what, we, what we got to look at to the right side of Devin Black is, again, the potential one-on-one -on -one coverage against Kamari Everett. There... There is a safety watching over him, so it may not be single-man coverage, but Kamari Averett will intentionally be a blocker as Devin Black runs to the right sideline out of the backfield. And I, I like to see a better effort out of Kamari on that play because he, he, he whiffed on that play. He, did, he didn't block his man, um, and Everett pulled the ball and came around the corner. And I, I could only think that he's a little windy because he's standing with his hands on his hips. Um... And I, I, yeah, that's the only thing I could think of. And like you said, it's too high safety. Not right now, though. They're, they're blitzing. Third down and one. Black over the middle for Kamari. Everett just popped out of his hands at the last second. Darius Campbell got a glove in the way. Right, and this is four down territory. Has to be. Down by 13 with 10 minutes left. Put it in the hands of Quayshawn Bird. Let him run right down the middle. Right, and, and right now, this is what Pride, Pride says in. As an offensive lineman, you got to have in your head, you're not going to beat me now. As they slow it down some more, <laughs> looking to the sidelines. Ten seconds on the play clock. Devin Black, along with Quayshawn Bird in the backfield. Fourth down and one. For Quayshawn Bird, he gets the job done. Great job by Quayshawn in the offensive line. I don't know why they're signaling. Uh, they're signaling uh, first down the other way. But uh, Quayshawn Bird does move the chains. It's first down, Wildcats. Exactly. So now back to pace, back to tempo. Should be. Three options to the left, one option to the right. Black with the low snap. He'll send it downfield for Kamari. Averett caught inside the 10. Good job by the big man. One-on-one -on -one coverage, one safety. Let's go. Down inside the 10-yard line, first and goal at the 8. And it's about time Devin Black found his massive tight end. Yeah, that was a good job by Kamari Everett. I, I, hey, get down the field, make the play. Now, he gave him a little, uh, little forearm there, but the officials didn't call it, so he in. We continue on. And Quayshawn Bird should be walking in the end zone right now, this play. And the handoff to Quayshawn Bird, but the offensive line crumbled at the line of scrimmage. I think that was a bad read by Black. He should have pulled that ball. So, so what's happening is Devin Black is reading that defensive end. If the defensive end crashes, he pulls the ball. If the defensive end plays him, he gives it. But he made the wrong, and he made the wrong read on that play. Clock winding down to 8:05 remaining as the tight end shift to the left. Now Quayshawn Bird untouched into the end zone. That's what I was saying should have happened last play. It was a play behind, but great job by the Wildcat offensive line and Quayshawn Bird getting into the end zone. 
And here comes Dylan McGottam out for the PAT, trying to make it again a six-point deficit instead of seven. Now, McGottam is doing his job today. Just stay one point ahead of him. Five foot nine, 170 pound, 175 pound junior. The PAT from Magadam. He'll send it with the right foot through the uprights. 22 to 28. The Wildcats are very much in this game with 7.56 left in the fourth quarter. Magadam got him again. Just stay one point ahead. And this all, this all is by, uh, off of that two point conversion that he caught himself. So he is the special teams today. So when he goes back and he looks at this tape, he can say, yes, raise my hand. I did my job. I, I even scored outside of my normal way of scoring points. And, and realistically, Bethune-Cookman has looked like the better all-around team because they've had to they've had to fight for their 22 points. The Panthers were given 14 of their points. They, they fought a little bit for that field goal that block field goal return, but you can't say that they weren't given seven points after a pass that goes off of an offensive helmet right into your hands. Mm. So you say that was a gift? A little bit. From who? Who would you say? From who? Yeah, did it come from Santa Claus or? <laughs> Easter Bunny. The Easter Bunny, okay. He should be hibernating right now, but he's out here giving them gifts. Okay. But, like you said, the Wildcat should be up right now outside of those miscues. But, hey, we are where we are in this ball game. Seven minutes and 56 um, seconds left to go. We're good. And the Wildcat fans are getting into it, as well as the sideline the first time they've been up and active realistically in the second half in a while. It's the fourth quarter and, and the, pride, the pride of Bethune Cookman are playing the butt. That's a, 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 a fan favorite here every fourth quarter. So if you know to start paying attention from now on the fourth quarter, this is when they play the song. And they've been doing it for years because I think the butt came out in the 80s. But that's when everybody usually, ice cream man and the butt is what Bethune Cookman fans love to hear. As you can see, this young lady down in, with the red hair, she, she's really getting it. And Bethune Cookman back on defense. Been one of their stronger suits the past couple of drives. Either way, first and 10 from the 25 for Prairie View. Jawan pass the handoff. Snuffed out in the backfield, no gain, second and 10. And Wall is not playing today. And who else was in there on that tackle other than Ontario Johnson? He's playing lights out football in his senior season as well. Pass from the shotgun. He'll send it over the middle, deep downfield, and a stutter step at the 45-yard line, finally taken down after gaining offensive territory. That is number zero, Antonio Mullins. That's a gasher. That's a big-time play by the Panthers. Big-time play by the Panthers. Just making tacklers miss in the open field. So first and 10 at the offensive 45. And the handoff goes to the left of the line. And another first down run for Prairie View, having their way right now. And they're going to show a little bit of tempo. <laughs> and the clock runs. Six minutes and 45 seconds left to go. And the Panthers are on the move as they look over to the sideline. Now they're going to now they're going to slow it down. First and 10 at the 33 in Wildcat territory. 20 seconds on the play clock, so they're just going to bleed this down. Again, that clock management with six and a half left. Only a six-point lead. You're in the driver's chair right now as an offense, and you, you have to know that. As an offensive line, you know you're just going to pile it on. And the run game successful to this point in the second half comes up with a three-yard gain. So... For me, this is this is second down. 
But for me, the mentality is third down. Because that's where the Wildcats have been getting them in second down in long situations. So if they think and act like it's third down, then third down is going to be fourth down. Did that make sense? Two third downs. It should be two third downs. It should be. But they need to play like it's third down. Because this has been the situation. That if third and long, they have not been converting. The Panthers have not been. Second and long or third and long. Jawan pass. He'll go through the air to the left sideline. He's got a man open. Caught. Touchdown. That's a dagger to the Wildcats. Why did you say that, nigga? Why did you Here's say the that they don't convert on second and long? Trajan Spiller finding the end zone on the left side. Oh, Nick, 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 Nick. I am worried, Nick. <laughs> Uh, five minutes and 21 seconds left. And Jawan Pass, who did not have a passing touchdown two weeks ago, has quite a few this afternoon. Quite a few. As the Panthers on our broadcast celebrate that touchdown, the Wildcats are down by two possessions again. And the PAT goes right through the uprights. 35 to 22, 13 point lead, but again, Time on the clock, and the Wildcat offense just needs to do what they've been doing. Just move the ball downfield, put it in the hands of Quayshawn Bird. Once that running game opens up, the secondary let Devin Black air it out to Kamari Everett. Let's see if the Wildcats still have it in them. And, 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 and now you see some of the fans, they're, they're kind of like hitting, hitting the stands and going to the parking lot and all of that stuff. But the Wildcats are still in this ball game and they can still pull it out like you said if they if they just put the ball in the end zone it's just as simple as that just, just put the ball in the end zone and get, and get six points that's it that's it that's, that's all the football is simple very simple so Quayshawn Bird back to receive this kickoff five minutes and 21 seconds left Bethune-Cookman trying to get their first win of the season against the number one team in the West. Prairie View A&M University. Wow. It's a different day. It is a different day. Luis Reyes. It will be handled by Quayshon Bird at the three. He'll come out, tackled at the 28-yard line. Good return by Quayshawn. Great return by Quayshawn. So 5.15 left. And Devin Black will come in. And I, I like the fact that, that, that Patrick got a chance to play as he, as he puts his, his hair back into the man bun. But Black has definitely been leading this offense um, today and has had good numbers. As, as Everett trots across the field. It's all about it. It's all about body language for me. And the Wildcats is still still haven't shown the body language to say that they're out of this game. Quayshawn Bird taken down in the backfield as Black got the handoff to the left side. First down and or excuse me, second down and twelve after the first down loss. So with five minutes, or, or just under five minutes left, down two possessions right now. I'm throwing the ball. I'm I'm going going five wide, and we 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 opening this thing up. Black will hang on to it. Makes a man miss. Gets the first down, and he's still on his feet into offensive territory. Look at this run from Devin Black down the left sideline. He's got blockers inside the 20 to the 15. What a run! What? A run. Just when I said I'm throwing the ball, he pulls that out. Oh. Where was that? Where was that? It was in the fourth quarter. That's what it was. In the fourth <laughs> quarter. <laughs> so once again, the Wildcats should be on pace. Tempo, tempo, tempo. Time is, time is not on your side right now. Time is money, gentlemen. Clock bleeds down to four minutes and nine seconds remaining in the quarter. They need two possessions to tie. Black from the shotgun. He'll look right, sends it over, and that's caught. 
It's a touchdown for the Wildcats into the hands of Cameron Overton. Cameron Overton with the big time play in the fourth quarter to bring this down to a one possession game. And the plenty of time left too. Plenty of time left. And the Wildcats still have two timeouts. Thank you, two timeouts. I might not have been saying timeout. I might have been saying the Wildcats still have barbecue in the parking lot. <laughs> but I was going to say two timeouts. Two timeouts. <laughs> uh, Dylan Magadam to make it a six-point deficit again. Nearly blocked away, but he got it through. A good, got it. a good response from Magadam in the second half. It has been. It has been a great response by Magadam. Magadam got all of them. So, right now, the Wildcats, are, we should be playing Let's Go Wildcats as we look at the replay. And we watch this pass from Devin Black. Throw it up in the air, 50-50 ball, and Overton comes mm. down with it. Man, that was a nice ball. And, and honestly, I thought it was going to be intercepted. As the ball hung up there, but the cornerback didn't even look back. I'm glad it wasn't intercepted because that would have been the dagger in the heart to say, hey, Nick, ah, I'm in the parking lot, man. In the parking lot. <laughs> but with three minutes and 57 seconds left, again, the Wildcats stay in the game down by six. And it's up to the defense now. It is up to the defense now. And all of the Wildcats watching online and all of the Prairie View fans watching online have continued I'll click back on the broadcast. Because you know after that, after that Prairie View touchdown, they went and started listening to Cardi B on YouTube, but now they're back. And the Wildcats are pushing to win their first game of the season. And Prairie View is showing that they're expecting an onside kick. But I don't know. I, I think I would trust the Bethune-Cookman defense here. I, they, I they've, they've, shown, they've shown competence here in this, in this game. I, I definitely would, too. I definitely would. The way they're playing, I wouldn't want to give them a shorter field than, than, than needed um, because the defense has been playing lights out football. Wildcats aren't showing an onside kick. And they'll just send it to about the 30-yard line. The fair catch was called for. And, and that's, that's, that's a good kick. That's a decent kick. Send it to the open area. Make, right. And again, you were, you were talking about the way that Shamar Minnis was potentially having troubles with the kickoffs or the punts over the shoulder. Right. That had potential for danger. It did have potential for danger. And, and it, it was a kick over to the, to the right-hand side of the field. And it was fielded, a fair catch, over the shoulder. Amazing. So it's up to the defense now with four minutes remaining. First and 10. With three minutes and 57 seconds left on the clock. The Wildcats are in, in good position right now. Two timeouts left for either team. First and 10 from the 28 yard line. An objective for the Panthers right now should be to bleed the clock. They're going to run the ball. They, they should be not trying to score again. Pass will hand it off. And it's about a six-yard run, second and four coming up. And Ontario Johnson on the tackle again. Jaden Stewart with the carry. But again, Ontario Johnson, as you mentioned, Terrence, just a beast on this defense. And on, So we're at second and short. And they're, like I said, everybody's looking at the sideline because the clock is running. They're trying, to, they're trying to get it in. With that game, I don't blame Coach Sims for not calling the timeout right, right there. But if they were to make a stop, I would call a timeout right now at the third down. At the second down, excuse me. The first third down. The <laughs> yes, the first third down. The imaginary third down. Two options to the right, one option to the left. One man goes in motion to the right of Jawan Pass, but there is the expected handoff that's gonna be held by Jawan Pass. He dives to try to get to the first down, but he's gonna be marked a yard short. 
And the chains are trying to move. The chains are trying to move. But like you said, he's, he's, he's a yard short. So this third down, the actual third down, they need to play it like it's third down. So and the third. Wildcats sideline trying to get the crowd involved. This could potentially decide the game. Third and one. Wildcats down by six. Jaden Stewart gets the handoff and sidesteps a couple of players, and he's got nothing but running room. There's a player chasing him down from behind. Unfortunate for the Wildcats. Definitely unfortunate for the Wildcats. And if you see at the beginning of the play, the safety was calling the other safety up, and there was nobody back there because everybody was on the line of scrimmage. Darnell Diaz had to get on his horse to chase down Jaden Stewart, who had nothing but green grass in front of him. And that's going to bring us down under two minutes. And now it's a first and 10 at the 20. Completely flipping the field. Right. Man. That definitely took the, the, the air out of the stadium. And the Panthers will use one of their final two timeouts with only one second left on the play clock. A minute and 43 seconds left here in quarter number four. The Wildcats down by six, but Prairie View, A&M threatening to score again. And this is one of those situations where you, you, you hear those crazy, crazy uh, sayings like, we didn't lose, we just ran out of time. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I've always questioned those things because the Wild, right now the Wildcats, they control their own destiny at the beginning of this drive. And unfortunately, they got gashed for major yards on the third down and one. It, it was almost six points on the run, but Darnell Diaz got back and made the tackle. Right. So now... The only thing can help us, we need some of that that juice from the first quarter with the turnovers, maybe a bobble snap or a fumble, because they have to run the ball because the Wildcats still have two timeouts left on the on the on, on the uh, on the scoreboard, the new scoreboard. And there is that handoff right through the middle. There was a gap there, down to the 16 again into the hands of Jaden Stewart. Second down and six coming up. And right now at this point, if they kick a field goal, that's it. Is is the deficit is is going to be nine. So as it looks like we have a wildcat player down on the field. All of this with 125 left in the game. 35 to 29. In favor of Prairie View A&M. Well, still a beautiful day. The clouds are going somewhere. Clouds have parted again. And I wanted to actually bring this up to you, Terrence, at the start of the broadcast, but I'll bring it up now. Mm -hmm. This game was supposed to be a mid-afternoon game between 4 and 5 o'clock kickoff. Okay. It has now been pushed to a 1... It had, it had been pushed to a 1 p.m. start. Mm -hmm. As a player, what does that do mentally with, with your pregame routine? And now we've seen cramping and dehydration because now you're playing in the hottest part of the day right. as opposed to starting in the hottest part of the day and going into the early evening. Now, as a player, you have a routine that you usually go through. So the night before, you probably at the hotel, you get a movie in, you watch film, and you go clock operator, please to sleep. The game clock wake to up one in minute the and 29 seconds. And if your game one, is at 4 o'clock, you have more time to eat breakfast, do a walkthrough, and lay in the bed and chill until the bus comes for you to have pregame meal and for you to go to the stadium. So when you cut early in the morning, all of that is cut out. So now... You're up. I, I'm up at 6 o'clock this morning, me, for a broadcast. So I could imagine if I'm playing, I'm still up that early because you still have to be to the stadium, to the stadium at least by 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You have to have breakfast. You still have to have a walkthrough. Clock so operator, it, it does change set the a little game bit, clock to 1 um, minute and 29 because seconds. Now Thank you're thrown off of your routine if you're used to playing at whatever time. But we know college football is different. It's, it's always... 
a lot of times in the middle of the day. A lot of times at noon. But timeout. As we have a, a timeout. The Thune Cookman. This is the second time I'm the Thune Cookman. Um, but a lot of times players, players, players really don't think about it. But it is something to think about, especially when you're getting up earlier in the morning to do everything. What time? When did they change the game to be at one o'clock? About a week ago, so there was definitely time to adjust. It was it wasn't a spur of the moment. Hey, you're kicking off three hours early. Right. <laughs> but still, it's still three hours. And just from a player standpoint, that three hours I could have been laying down resting, get, going over more things mentally, and envisioning plays and doing different things. So it's almost like the Dolphins and to and the Jaguars tomorrow. I'm going to be up watching the game because I'm a <laughs> Dolphin, right? But, you know, they're playing over in England, 9.30 in the morning. They're not used to playing in England. Do we it's see the London Jaguars in the next two years? They need to go somewhere. Maybe they'll win. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Maybe that'll get, get them going. Second and about six for Prairie View A&M. Controlling their own destiny. Jawan Pass avoiding tackles, and he'll get the first down inside the 10 at the nine yard line. And those chains are moving just like this clock. And that, with only one timeout left for Bethune Cookman, that will almost just about do it unless the Wildcats can get a turnover here on the next play. Yeah. It's going <laughs> to. Now, it has happened. Actually, twice today. We've seen crazier today. Right. It, especially, especially on on the on the Prairie View side. They they had two fumbles in the red zone in the first quarter. So oh, oh they're gonna take a knee. As as some, some frustration sets in. And the Wildcats, the Wildcats. Terry Sims will hang on to his timeout. He'll take the headset off. So we'll have one more knee in about 25 seconds to finish off this game. And I know a lot of people don't, don't like that to say, okay, you're giving up. But uh, you're kind of prolonging the game, the, inev the inevitable right now, by, call it, by making that timeout. So the Wildcats did play a heck of a ball game today as time runs out. So the search for the first win of the season continues. This is the number one team in the West, Terrence. There's definitely good things to look at on film. The, the initial spread on everybody's radar was 12 points, and this is now, they cut that in half. That's a six-point game. But as the clock bleeds down to zero, Pra Prairie View A&M improves their winning streak to four games and will now be five and one on the season. Bethune Cookman 0 oh, and 7, but Terrence, there as as disappointing as it is, there's a lot of there's a lot of positives to come out of this. There is a lot of positive positive things to come out of this, but unfortunately, the only people that look at the positive things that come out of this are people like us, broadcasters, mm -hmm. because on that team they don't care. For them, it's black and white. Either we win or we lose, and right now, we've lost seven times, mm -hmm. uh, the last seven times out, and I think for the Wildcat fans. Being around Bethune Cookman football, the only thing fans care about is beating fam youth. So we can go lose every game, but as long as we win the classic, everybody's okay. That's the mentality around here. So right now, they do have a lot of things they could build on. The coaches are going to go talk on that same, same point. They're going to say, okay, guys, you played the number one team in the West. They're, they're possibly going to be in the SWAC championship, and you went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And next week, you'll be playing the number one team on the East. And we'll see what happens there. But they do have some things to build on. But I guarantee you a lot of those players don't see it that way. They see it as, we lost, bro. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, once again, our final score, Prairie View A&M 35, Bethune-Cookman University 29. Next week, the Wildcats travel to Jackson State to meet up with Coach Prime, head coach Deion Sanders of the Jackson State Tigers. That game is set for a noon kick on ESPN. So for Terrence Gatling and our entire production team, I'm Nick Gimble saying so long from Daytona Beach, Florida.